Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. Today, we return to our beautiful journey to bang Colonel Sanders. Now, if you've not been in this stream before, that may be a rather strange opening. You may be a little bit confused, possibly a bit of trepidation currently going on. Don't worry, all right? I'm going to, I'm with you every step of the way. I'm going to take you through this. It's going to be okay. It is an official KFC dating simulator. We're going to play it. That's our plan for the evening. It's a Sunday evening. We are relaxed. We are chilled. We've had a nice day. We've, you know, we're full of dinner. I've got a cup of tea. Who's ready to jump on some, some greasy chicken thighs? I bet. I bet we all are. I am. I know I am. Are you a thigh man? You a breast man? Or are you more of a Sanders man? That's what I think I am right now. We're going to try and uh, work out exactly what the secret recipe really is. And the humans from Wu Zhao won't be taking this. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. No, that won't happen again. How, why, how, what, when and where? They are the, the questions you have to ask. And... And when you roll them all together, especially when I'm reviewing these terrible MMORPGs or I'm playing them for a long time, they all kind of, all those questions get asked, but all in kind of one go, and I just kind of condense them into a noise. So after I've spent seven or eight hours playing a terrible MMORPG, I want to ask, and I want to write down in the script, who, what, why, when, where, how. But I end up just kind of going, eh? And I write the script based off that noise. That's the start of every single script. And you know what? I wasn't even lying about finishing a pen. Like, actually, properly, full-on, finishing a pen. That's ridiculous. There's no ink in this. Someone in the chat says, you're playing this again. This never went away. This was in the background the entire time. This was always there. If you are too much of a coward to see what happens when a chicken-loving streamer and a chicken-loving cook, you know, start to feel affection for each other, you can leave. It's okay. Is it me or has my hair grown bigger? Well, the weird thing is, Error, is that hair grows naturally a little bit every day. Uh, you Sometimes you cut the hair, but when you cut the hair, this is the problem, it's not actually like a permanent cut. It will remain on that style for a little bit, Maybe a day, possibly three or four, maybe a week if you're lucky. But then as as time passes, hair grows. I'm at a really, a really difficult thing right now. Because I know that insomnia is coming up in about five days' time. That's the big event in Birmingham that I'm going to be at. And I know that I need a haircut. The problem is, if I go for a haircut, it'll be too short. But if I don't go for a haircut, it'll be too long. And I don't think you understand how difficult my life is. That's my biggest problem. That's it. That's it. People often look at me and go, Josh, you must have some problems. I'm like, yeah, I do. I do, actually. If I go for a haircut now, it might be a little bit too short. But if I don't go for a haircut now, it might just be a little bit too long. And I don't think a lot of people understand the difficulties in life that I face. So, you know, people come up to me all the time and they say they've got their own life problems and, you know, their own trials and tribulations to focus through. But I don't think a lot of people realize that gamers and YouTubers and Twitch streamers are without a doubt the most hard done to demographic of people. We suffer more. We do. I mean, like successful YouTubers are without a doubt the most persecuted for anyone who's unsure about my sense of humour, I'm being what's called facetious, or ironic in this case. Maybe even satirical, possibly paradoxical. I am basically taking the piss out of the fact that I don't have that many problems by comparing myself to people that actually do. Because I know that some people will watch this and go, Wow, what a dick. What an absolute dickhead. That's, yeah... A lot of people, they won't understand that my sarcasm is, is poking fun at the ease of myself. That's what it is. Sometimes I wake up and I have 
I have to think about which waistcoat to put on. And that's that's half an hour gone there. And that's half an hour gone right there. What an absolute dickhead. Yeah, pretty much. Have some bits to ease your problems. Thank you. Thank you, Star. I appreciate that. That means I'll be able to... I'll be able to go and get my hair cut. That's the plan. If you've subscribed with Prime, by the way, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, nothing's happened on the stream yet, so th this is it. This is, It's just three hours of me talking about my problems, to be honest. I've got problems. Ah, oh, God, guys, do you want to wanna know? Do you want to know a problem? A difficult problem? I might even get cancelled for this. this. This problem is so incredibly complicated, I might get cancelled based on who is watching. If you work for Wizards of the Coast, or have anything to do with official Magic the Gathering stuff, uh, you have to leave now. You, you can't... If any of you... Um, we're going to work on the honour policy, okay? It's the honour policy. If you work for Wizards of the Coast, or Magic the Gathering stuff in any way, or Hasbro, you have to leave. Right? And I'm trusting you to your word. We, we work on the honour policy here. And I'm just scrolling through. I'll show you the problem that I've got, okay? The problem that I've got is... It's not a common... Pro you don't face this every day, which is why I think I need your help. You know what? If you do work with the coast, then, yeah, you might even have some, some input on this. You might have some, some help, some idea, some way that I can solve this. My goodness. MC, thank you very, very much. That's incredibly... Incredibly kind of you, gifting out 20 tier 1 subs to people. Look at this. <laughs> right, why is this game happening again? Right, listen, okay? I don't choose this game. This game chooses me. I woke up one day, it was already installed on my computer. That was the problem. Here is my problem. I am building a Magic the Gathering Commander deck. And I've got two of the same card. But I need to work out which version of the card I put in to flex on people. This is what I need, and I need your advice. If you play Magic the Gathering, you need to know. Right, we've got the Ancient Tomb box topper art, or we've got the Ancient Tomb Zendikar Expedition foil. That's the question. Do we go with the Ancient Tomb box topper, do we go with the Ancient Tomb Zendikar Expedition foil to flex on people? I know, and you know what? Let me tell you something. If these were real, they'd be really expensive. That's why I need to flex on people. If this was real, it'd be worth about 100 quid. And if this was real, it'd be worth about 120. Why not both? You can't play Commander like that. You're not allowed. Whichever is more expensive. Well, you see, the thing is, they're neither expensive. They're both worth about 50p. That's why I'm trying to work out how to flex on people. Don't worry. I tell people they're proxies. It's okay. Don't tell the Magic the Gathering subreddit I said that, though. I would get banned. Did you guys see that someone got banned on the Magic the Gathering subreddit recently? Because uh, they said the word proxy. If you say proxy on the subreddit, you immediately get banned. They actually send a hit squad round to your house. That's how serious it is. They take all your magic cards away. Play modern, you can flex with four of them. I've got my modern deck sorted already. For anyone who does play Magic the Gathering, I know this is a very small subset of people watching. The commander that I run is called Sen Triplets. And I run this because I... It's not enough that I have to win. Others must lose. That's my main focus on this. When I play Magic the Gathering, it's not about me having fun. It's about you having less fun. That's the way that I work it out, pretty much. When people say to me, people say to me, you know, did I have fun? And I like to think of it in like kind of a mathematical way. I had fun if I'm enjoying the game more than my opponent. And there's two possible ways to make that happen. One, I play a deck that I really enjoy, which makes me have a good time. Therefore, mathematically, I must have had fun. Or, I play a deck that means the opponent doesn't have any fun. Which means, by comparison, even if I'm enjoying like a normal level of gameplay, I'm having more fun than them. Which means, I must have had fun. That's how it works, see? I don't play magic to enjoy myself. I play magic to irritate other people, and therefore my day is better. 
That's how it works. Yes. For anyone who does play Magic the Gathering, if you want to Google Sen Triplets, the card, you'll see exactly why it's ridiculous. It's, it's horrible. As soon as you play it, people look at me and go, Oh, does, does Sen Triplets win you the game? I'm like, no, 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 not at all. No, what it does is make the rest of the game insufferable for you. The crazy thing is, not, if you don't play Magic the Gathering, it's a competitive card game. Nothing in my deck wins. Everything slows the game down and prevents you winning, which I see as victory. People go, oh, so what's your what's your win condition? Don't know. What kind of combos have you got? None. Okay, so what are you going to do? I'm going to draw cards and then stop you doing anything. They're like, oh, so are you are you eventually going to win the game? I'm like, I have. I'm going to I'm going to hit you for one damage, maybe every two or three turns. And you're not going to be able to do anything. There we go. That's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> how do you win? I don't. It's it's about sending a message. That's what it is. You can't play spell. I've got everything. I've got mana leak, counter spell, force of will, negation, erasure. Everything's in there. That's all it is. Make people rage quit. Pretty much. I mean, we can just we can just look at the top cards. Opt. That draws me cards. The Soaring City. That sends your own stuff back to your hand. Prosperous Thief, that draws me cards. Land Tax, that means you don't get as many lands as I do. Liliana of the Veil, because, you know, making players discard cards every turn is a, is a good idea. Right, I did say that I'd be playing this KFC game. I did say I'd be doing this. Stop distracting me with Magic the Gathering talk. Okay, stop it. Let's play this game. This stream isn't about fun. This stream is about serious KFC-based dating sims. Someone said to me, when I finish the KFC dating sim, am I going to play the pigeon dating sim, the Hatoful boyfriend sim, or the John Cena sim, or even the, the sucker for love Cthulhu, ancient gods dating sim? I don't want to become... No, let me... I'll, start, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Part of me doesn't want to become a streamer who gets known for streaming dating games. But another part of me will consider it. Okay? The other part of me will consider. It's That is a very honest part of me. And I think we've all got that part of us deep down. You know when you go, Oh, I, I would never play dating games. Unless. Oh <laughs> No, I'm joking. But. It's just a silly little thought. Although. That's how it works for me. Right, let's play these dating games. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. What kind of Magic the Gathering cards do I think Colonel Sanders would make? He would definitely play... What He plays Slithers, wouldn't he? I think the fact that he knows how things work together. They would be his 11 herbs and spices. He would rename all of his Slithers to Herbs and Spices, and once all 11 are assembled, he would play a Slither Queen and just dominate. Yeah, he'd play Food Tokens. He would play Asmarano Mardi Karastina Kuldakar. I learned that name. Okay? If you play Magic the Gathering, you now have increased respect for me. I learned the name of Asmarano Mardi Karastina Kuldakar because when you play a card that says cards cannot be played, when you play Pything Needle, you need to be able to say the exact name. Right, here we go. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are in interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? And we get to choose. Do we take him down a peg? Or do we flatter him? Do we peg him? Or do we flatten him? What do we do? Now, as much... 
you should check out MTG Remy. I freaking love MTG Remy. MTG Remy is one of the greatest YouTubers currently working. He is fantastic. For those of you who haven't been in this stream before, did you think I was joking? about the official KFC dating sim. This isn't a fan make, by the way. This is like an actual official proper game. Now, listen, if I put polls in the chat, you guys have to promise to not do the thing that you do. Because what you do is, for some reason, you all vote 50-50. And that's not helpful. I'm, I'm looking for answers, okay? I'm looking to actually make progress. There's a one minute poll. It's started now. It's at the top of the Twitch stream. You can click on it and you can vote. Could you please give me information? I'm looking to gather information here. I'm bringing in the data, bringing in the variables. Am I trying to teach the mob? Look, I was a teacher for a long time. I was a teacher in high school. I've been a teacher in primary schools. I've taught a lot of age ranges. Teaching a class of 940 people who aren't even in the room with me is difficult. I'm not going to lie, but I'm not giving up. I am not... I don't know what the context is at all that I must choose Peg. So, basically, this is a dating sim, and we're trying to get Colonel Sanders to fall in love with us. But you can die in this dating sim. There are you know, death choices. There are mistakes. You can play the entire game and fail to you know, seduce Colonel Sanders. I don't want to fail. I've never failed to seduce a man in my life. I've never attempted, but I've also never failed. And I want to, you know, keep that. That's a, that's a good score to have right there. I think I could seduce a guy. If you played Magic the Gathering, it would be even easier. I mean, if you're a guy that plays Magic the Gathering, I can seduce you straight away. I would walk up to you and I'd sit down and go, <laughs> just saying, I would tap you so hard you wouldn't untap during your controller's next untap step. And then I'd wait, because by then I've passed priority to you, and it's your turn. <laughs> Why am I suddenly right? <laughs> oh, I like how that's a... Oh, 100, 165 to 162. 50-50. Jesus Christ, chat. I haven't been this upset about a poll since Brexit. Right, we'll go with flatter. You know... I think we make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. I'm with the right business partner. I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. For those of you who are just joining us, there is still time to leave. I'm going to be honest with you. If you've just arrived, you can still go. No one's going to keep you here. No one's going to be mad if you want to leave. It's okay. What's going on here, for those of you who are unsure? KFC dating game. Twitch chat. Sunday evening. I just caught your stream. I am very sorry. I can't take this any more goodbye. I just joined and this is something. I like to think that the title of the stream is inflammatory enough. The fact that it's in the just chatting category and the title is Let's Seduce Colonel Sanders. I deliver. That's not clickbait. I am going to deliver. Just saw the latest video and I caught you twice. I caught you once with the boobs and the other time with the reference to a hoe. I know what you're doing. I know that I'm in the background. I know that you just put me on while you're doing other stuff. I don't expect your attention, but occasionally I will steal it. That's what I do. Miriam, where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you, too. This is Swords of Legends online levels of voice acting I'm going for here. You know what? We should do that. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. 
Yes, here we go. Swords of Legend Online is inspiring me from now on. Oh, by the way, for those of you who weren't here, she went on a date and had sex with a dishwasher. Not a guy who works as a dishwasher. A literal machine dishwasher. That's the game. It's okay. I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam! Okay, sure, but you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, that's the dishwasher's name, by the way, he asked me to go out with him. Of course, I told him, you'd better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things spiralled out of control. This raises more questions than it answers. She is not only on a date with a dishwasher, but the date has ended up in skydiving. Look, there's only two possible ways that a date ends up in skydiving. Either both people involved are incredible thrill seekers, or you have been kidnapped and are also a spy. There's you, no date randomly ends up in skydiving. This is planned from one way or another, either really good or really bad. You've never agreed to a date, sat down in a Starbucks, had a conversation, a few hours later, you're jumping out of a plane. That is either a let's go skydiving for a first date, let's kind of actually plan it thing, or hey, why don't you come and look at my plane? Halfway through around the world, ooh, this is bad, best skydive. Did she just say skydiving? As if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker. Thank you, game. Thank you. It's not a... You know what? You know what I really hate? Okay, let's just go off on a rant for a bit. People. That's the whole sentence. That's it. I was... You know what? I was actually going to add more to the end of that sentence. And then I thought... No, that pretty much covers it. That's... I mean, I could go more specific. Don't really feel a need to now. Done. I really hate people who expect to be taken on weird dates. Because I used to be involved in online dating. Plenty of fish, Tinder, that kind of stuff. The amount of people who are like, Hey, I don't want a regular date. Take me to the zoo. You ever been to the zoo? It's boring. Just like animals in cages. Go somewhere else. Why is it? What? I mean, why is it for some reason every single dating profile wants to go to the zoo? Does anyone even know where the nearest zoo is? No one knows where the nearest zoo is. How many animals does a zoo have to have to be classified as a zoo? Cross has just donated $50. Cross, why? I mean, first of all, thanks. That's great. I can go and get a haircut. But secondly... I'm ranting about zoos while we play a KFC dating game. Is this really what you want? I mean, I'll play more of it if this is what you want. If this is going to bring the big bucks in, okay, that's absolutely fine. I'll do that. But, right, how many animals does a zoo have to have to be classified as a zoo? Like, if I just, if I would take like a cat litter box with a see-through lid and just slam it over a squirrel, does that count as a zoo? Because you've got a monkey in a big cage, you've got a giraffe, you've got a lion. How, how many of these can you reduce it down by until you haven't got a zoo? What you have is a prisoner from another species. That's what I want to know. How, how small can we get? Because if zoos have... I mean, are zoos tax exempt? I don't know. Do they count as businesses? If you have humans or animals, just prisons or zoos, in a way... In a way, they could be there. I mean, I went to visit a zoo that only had one dog in it. It was a shit zoo. <laughs> Ten fucking minutes of setup. Ten minutes of setup. Oh, it was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. Oh, you can charge back that $50 if you want to. Like, I mean, you, you donated that while the story was still going somewhere. I am sorry. You, if, you, if you feel hard done by, unsubscribed, un, unfollowed, blocked, banned on Twitter.
I was going to subscribe, but you lost it. It's worth it. I stand by it as being a good joke. Right, let's get back to the game, because that's where the fun is. And now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details... Oh, it's... Yeah, bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened? But the emotional connection... Wowzers. Wowzers. It's a good... You know, we need different voices for these. I'm, I need to do Swords of Legends online style acting. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. Fine. We'll focus on school. Wowzers, Wowzers has very jinkies kind of energy, doesn't it? I saw a, a tweet a few days ago that actually made a lot of sense. Why is it that fictional bands, and you'll understand, if you're a man of culture, or even a woman of culture... You'll understand where this connection goes. When I think of Scooby-Doo, I think of fictional bands. Why is it that fictional bands produce absolutely banging songs? Why is that? Yeah, you've got it. It's the Hex Girls. The Hex Girls... I've, you, we've spoken about this before, guys. The Hex Girls was a moment. The Hex Girls was an, an awakening moment... I must have been 10 years old, I must have been watching Scooby-Doo, and they walked out, and it was three goth girls playing some rock music, and I just thought, that's going to be a thing now. All right. That's a core memory. Choices have been made. Fantastic. Done and done. Hot goth rock chicks. Fantastic. That's, I think, I think the Hex Girls were responsible for a lot of awakening moments. You know, I was. someone asked me this question a while ago. We'll get back to KFC, don't worry. Someone asked me this question a while ago. I said, Josh, who was your first crush? Who was my first crush? My first crush was really weird. It was an animated film. Who's seen Treasure Planet? Remember the captain? Remember the cat? The captain cat? That was it. I was watching that film when I was like... I don't know how old I was. But seriously, I was watching... Treasure Planet, and that cat walked on the screen, and I just thought, that is a sexy, sexy character. Captain Amelia. And then I was watching, and I thought, am I a furry? I don't think I am. Like, I'm not at Sabre Spark levels of furrydom. But I, I have to admit that the cat, Captain, from Treasure Planet, was hot. You have to admit that. You have to be honest with that. And then the next crush, we're going to go on for a while here, was... Who watched Titan A.E.? Remember Titan A.E.? Ty Almost no one watched Titan A.E., but it was a massively underrated film. Okay, Titan A.E. was a fantastic film. It was genuinely a really good film. And the, the character in that, what was her name? She was, she was strong, she was powerful, she was confident, she was, she was flying a spaceship. Yeah, she was hot purple hair and everything going on. She was tough. You know what? Strong, strong, confident, capable women. That's, that's the attraction level. Do I mean Treasure Planet? No, Treasure Planet was the cat. Titan AE was the girl. Akima, that was the, the name of the girl. Thank you very much. Um, Sean, I can see you right there. Akima, that was the one. Yeah, Titan AE was cool. Okay, let's get back to trying to bang Colonel Sanders. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong... You don't want to be right. What a great soundbite. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you, you encounter your rivals in the quad. Now, if you've not been on this stream and seen this game, that character is called Van Van, and he is a, a parody of Jojo, and I can't remember her name. The reason that this dude is a parody of Jojo is because if you look at your hair, you'll, is his hair, you'll see it's in the shape of a star... And its colour is platinum. It's very, very self-aware. Ashley, that was what. Ashley, her, everyone hates Ashley. Apart from the fact that, look, she's actually got tights on with, uh, with drumsticks. And she's got thighs going on. She has got the thigh going on right there. So yes, it's a Joe Star star and Ashley. Oh, it, it's also uh, Rufus. Right, so this character's name is Pop. 
and the reason... You can tell from a distance they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. This character is called Pop in the game because his name is Bob, but he's so dumb he put his badge on upside down and refers to himself as Pop. However, he looks suspiciously like my son Rufus from Skyrim. So we're just going to call him Rufus. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's the swirly? Found delicious. I'm going to do that voice every time. I'm going to make you freaking hate this character. Oh, it's great. I'll order you on up right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. Some sprinkles with the dog and a treat. You can leave if you want. You can get your swirly dipped, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size, Ashley? Like, well, I'm obviously taller than you. I would hope I'm taller than you in this universe. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. That's true, Van Van. You are. After the sword MMO, the voice is good. Oh, wow. Very good voice. Look, if you hate him already, I've done my job as a voice actor. If I've made you feel an emotional response toward anything, I've done my job. There is that horse the colonel rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Oh yeah, Colonel Sanders rides a horse to school. You've got some nerve, Josh, suggesting I pick on a defenceless horse. I wasn't suggesting that, Van Van, but okay. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Oh yeah, in the game I stuck my hand into a still-mixing mixer to grab... Something? I can't remember what. I'm sure it was important. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Josh, how's the hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. He's such a caring guy. What is this game? A fever dream? Oh, you haven't seen the intro. If we finish it, I'll play you the intro. Oh my god, it's amazing. Why does he look like a Jojo character? Because it's a parody of a Jojo character. If you are confused, stay with us. It's a Sunday evening. You've got nothing better to do. You've got nothing better to do. You know it, I know it. Everyone knows it. Let's just stay and watch me trying to bang Colonel Sanders. Can you think of a better Sunday evening? You know when... It's that scene from Hot Fuzz. Now, my perfect Sunday is staying in, trying to bang a fictional anime guy known for cooking greasy chicken. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail after winning so hard. I am feeling things. Stop it. I'm going to feel you a lot more feelings by the end of this, trust me. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided... But your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavour of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Ooh, he's, that's a democratic burn right there. That is beautiful. This is this is harder than Elden Ring. It is. Yeah, I mean, who's been enjoying Elden Ring? <laughs> no, let me rephrase that. Who's been playing Elden Ring? None of us have enjoyed it. We've played Elden Ring. I am Mikola, Blade of... Oh, shut up! Mikola, Blade of Miquelia, or whatever your freaking name is. Stop doing that stupid second phase. Oh my god, I hate her so much. It's Malaika, or, uh, it's Malaika, isn't it? Or Malachi, or someone. It's Michaela. I hate her. Oh, the Scarlet Rot. I only like Scarlet Rot. Melania, Blade of Michaela, that's the one. And she just does that thing. You know what? I've worked out how I actually blitz through Elden Ring. People always go, oh, you're playing on easy mode. Right, shut up, okay? Rivers of Death, plus 10. Nagakiba, plus 25. That's two samurai swords with a hell of a lot of bleed. Mimic. Plus ten. Summon a version of myself. You are being bled. That's how this is going. My strategy is just 
everyone is being rivers of death, rivers of blood, whatever it's called. The katana that uses red to kill things with. Just everyone is being bled. That's what we're doing. That's how we are going full on katana build. Oh, God. Hoarfrost stomp. Okay, sorry, speedrunner. Have you seen the 12-minute speedrun, by the way? I watched the 12-minute speedrun of Elden Ring. It's bullshit. It's what it is. I can't believe that that happens. But it's ridiculous. Right, here we go. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Josh. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. I thought there was a dog bark downstairs. Give me a sec, see what my dog was barking at. He barks at stuff all the time. Apollo? You guys best to behave while I was away. You best behave. My, I have a little dog. Now we're in control. No. No, I can't leave you for more than five minutes. You'll vote 50-50 on something, I guarantee it. Okay, here we go. Maybe you could tell me more about your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Josh. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley, for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Oh yeah, that was a small point. We found the Necronomicon, but for food. Pro, first time watching you live. I'm sorry. If you want to, you... You don't need to stay. I understand. If you you could if you want to maintain the vision of me that you've got, just stick to YouTube. It's okay. I, what even is this game? This is the the KFC dating simulator, and I'm going to play it. Here we go. Whoa, that's that book. It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire. But I don't really believe in all that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? Slight tangent. We need to talk about witches and wizards. Let me explain. Okay? Josh got the game when he bought the KFC console. I would love to have the KFC console. I don't have one. But one day, maybe. One day I might do. The plot is getting me invested and I don't like it. So, yes, we basically have to use the magic spell book to win the cooking competition at the Academy for Learning Cooking School Academy of Learning. That's what it's called. Did they actually make KFC console? Yes, they did. Thank you very much for the Prime subs, by the way. I pre Explain the deep lore to me. Uh, just chicken, pretty much. Chicken. Let me talk about and ask you a question, because I need your input as well. Witches and wizards. Wizards... It's often said that wizards can change their appearance to look like whatever they want to look like. And witches can do the same. Now, just think about it like this. A wizard often appears as an aged old man. And a witch often appears as an attractive young girl. But remember, these people can change how they look. So think about it. If you were an old man... What would you want to change yourself to look like? Probably an attractive young girl. Because then you'll get all the attention. And if you were an attractive young woman, what would you want to change yourself to look like to focus on your magical studies? Probably a wizened old man. Therefore, it is my theory that all old men wizards are actually young, attractive wizards who have made themselves look like this. And all young, attractive wizards are old men wizards. And it's just, it's vice versa. I guarantee that Gandalf is like a 19-year-old girl who just wanted to look like that and was really powerful. You know, Dumbledore was the same. It's exactly what it was. My theory, though, and I subscribe to this theory very, very much, is Gandalf is not a wizard. 
Gandalf is a max level fighter with some basic magic spells. You never actually see him cast many spells. He casts light. He casts shield when he's on the bridge. What does he then do? Does he start magic missiling it? No. Draws a sword, jumps after the Balrog. Who does that? A level 20 fighter. That's who does that. When he appears from the west, riding with the light. Anyone can cast light. What is it? He rides in with a massive huge sword and just starts slapping people around. Gandalf does not need his magic because he is not a wizard. He is a max level fighter who knows basic wizarding spells. I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here, that it says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory-erasing spell sitting right in front of you, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Do we cast the forbidden spell? Look, guys, it's just about the cooking. It's about the art. It's about becoming the master chef, which is just master chief with one less letter. That's how important this is. Do we cast the spell to forget Colonel Sanders? Because if we forget Colonel Sanders, cast, do not cast the spell. Are we going to poll it? We're going to poll it. If we cast the spell and forget Colonel Sanders, Don, thank you for the prime sub, then we will probably pass the school year. And remember, the year is three days, so if we need to reset it, we probably can. But again, what's the point of living if we forget about Sanders? What is the point of life without chicken? I don't know if there is a point, to be honest. If you cast a spell, what's the point of games? To cast or not to cast? That is the question. Whether tis nobler in the minds to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take up arms against a sea of troubles, you know, all that kind of stuff. But uh, stop 50 50 ing! God, you are the worst! Like, you know the old riddle? Oh, yes, one of these statues will tell the truth and one of these statues will lie. You guys are like that, except both statues lie. That's what it is. It's, it's dumb. It's like, ah, oh, yes, here's the riddle. One of them will do this and the other one will do the same thing and they'll try and confuse you. And I'm like, okay, is there an answer? Like, no. No, there isn't. You just get irritated. Do not cast. Guys, we are not casting it. Don't do it after all. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. Oh yeah, the professor is a dog. I mean, that's probably the least surprising thing that's happened so far. Okay? The, the professor is a dog, and for some reason, there is a really high-resolution picture of someone's face in the background, but I do not know who that is. This is Professor Dog, although as he prefers to be called, Sprinkles. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up, and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Or dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Do we wait to see what happens? I think he's probably going to be sick, isn't he? I've got dogs. They're, they're, they're randomly sick all the time. The great thing is, they look at you and smile. Occasionally. I mean, Apollo, the big fluff ball, he'll be running around all the time. He'll, he'll eat anything. Run around. Stop. Look at me. Smile. Vomit. And then just carry on running around. I'm thinking, thanks, Apollo. Now I've got to clean this up. It's almost like my dogs don't know that I'm a YouTuber. 
They don't know. If they knew, I bet they would treat me with more respect. Now, my dog, he sits there. He sits there pooping, staring at me. And dogs do that because they trust you and they want you to take care of them. And he stares at me. And I'm sat there thinking, you don't know that I'm a niche micro-celebrity. If you knew, you wouldn't do that. We would hire someone. It's like the disrespect. That's what it is. It's the disrespect that I really... Is is he not asserting dominance? That's actually how all influencers assert dominance over another. It's just power shit in front of somebody else. They're not going to say a thing, are they? That's how you establish your position within the hierarchy of influencers. I'm not going to be telling you this. This is influencers' secrets. But this is exactly how it works. I'm famous on the internet. You know what? When people ask my job, that's just what I say. When people say to me, so what'd you do? I always go, do you know what an MMORPG game is? And they always go, no. And I go, what I do is irrelevant then. You know, it's, it's not really important. Is this what goes on at VidCon? Pretty much. Pretty much. Let me tell you something really interesting. I'm excited to go to Insomnia. We'll vote for the dog in a second, don't worry. I'm excited to go to Insomnia, which is the gaming festival happening in Birmingham in about a week's time. And I know a couple of people going down there, and I've, I know there are a couple of big YouTubers going down there, a couple of big Twitch streamers going down there, a couple of very big cosplayers going down there, and I've been seeing all of the the chat between the, the big important people involved, and everyone knows everyone. Like, I swear to God, there is like this, there is genuinely like an actual cabal of YouTubers who all know each other, and it's ridiculous, and I don't know anyone. Oh, by the way, and you'll like this. The Insomnia second stage, shut up with the second monitor jokes. We will be able to record it. So while we might not be able to actually stream it live, it is highly likely we will be able to record the D&D game and you will be able to watch it back in the future, potentially on the... Uh, the Insomnia website or Twitter or YouTube page or however they want to do it. Or they'll give me the footage and I'll share it between everyone else. So it'll be myself, Rage Darling, uh, Billy Tricks, and Callum Upton all doing D&D stuff. Can we just take a second to admire how dumb the cabal thing is and how far it's gone? And you know what I love is I love, and th I'm so happy I can talk about this, I love how easy it was to get every other YouTuber on board. Like, when I contacted people, when I tweeted at the Spiffing Brit and said, hey, I've got a really dumb idea, do you want to do it? He responded in, like, five minutes, going, that sounds great, let's jump on Discord and have a chat. He was available straight away. And when I contacted, like, Big Fry TV and Sid Alpha, they were streaming while I contacted them, but they all got back to me and just straight away said, yeah, no problem at all, we'll help you out with that. They were... Everyone was so easy to work with, and they were so on board with doing it. It was just such a stupid thing that we all decided to do. And Callum was happy with it, and Rage got the voice for it. And like I've said, never give your enemies a cool nickname. Never, ever, ever give your enemies a cool nickname, because they will run with it. That's what it is. And it was just... The fact that every big YouTuber that I approached, and I also approached Upper Echelon Games with it as well, and they did get back to me and said yes, but unfortunately they said yes about three hours after I'd edited the final video. So it's not that I was leaving them out, it was just time zones and stuff like that, but they were totally on board with doing it as well. It was so nice that all of the big YouTubers that I contacted, because this is going to sound dumb. I mean, I still get, like, a little bit of starstruckness going on when I'm messing these people. You know, I'll message Big Fry TV, I'll message Sid Alpha, and part of me's still thinking, these guys are like proper YouTubers. They're like proper professional YouTubers. You can't just message them. These aren't people. These are above us. And then when they respond and they're like, yeah, that's fine, whatever you want. I'm kind of thinking, my God, he responded to me. That's amazing. Yeah, they're first monitor YouTubers. It just, it, yeah, you forget that they're just people. 
I mean, people message me all the time on Discord, people emailing me, people be sending Twitter stuff, and they're like, hey, I'm really sorry to take up your time. And I'm just thinking, mate, I'm just lying in bed reading a book. You're not taking my time up at all. It's not a problem. Or they'll send me a message going, you know, hey, I know you're really busy. And I'm sat there thinking, I'm just testing out builds on Elden Ring. I am as far from busy as I could possibly be. And, and you know, it's, it's lovely that people precede their messages with, sorry to take away your time. I'm thinking, you're not taking away my time. So far I've been, you know, I mean, when I spend ages ed rendering a video, I will just sit at my desk kind of going, rawr, 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 rawr. And then people message me and they're like, I bet you're working really hard. I'm like, yes. Yes, I am. Hard and serious, serious work is, is happening. Serious work is going on. How dare you message me? Is that a, a mug, T-Rex mug? It is. It's a T-Rex. <laughs> Get it? It's a T-Rex. You know what? I guarantee that if he had seen the message and had time, Asmongold probably would have joined in. The only reason that I didn't contact him it's because I know how freaking busy the guy is. I don't think he would ignore it out of any sense of superiority. Because he seems like a properly down-to-earth dude. But everyone that I messaged, super down-to-earth. Super, super down-to-earth. It's weird. So people message me. I'm active on my Discord all the time. I'm always on my Discord. And people, whenever I type, they always go, oh, I can't believe you're here. I can't believe you're typing. I can't believe we're talking. And I'm thinking... What else am I going to do? You know, I'm just going to sit here and chill and chat to you guys. Here we go. Have you seen Asmon eating cake? Yeah, he's just shoveling cake into his mouth and someone goes, I can't believe you're a millionaire. It's... Asmon Gold has earned a lot of money over the time. He's provided a hell of a lot of entertainment to people. And I've, I got a message earlier from one of the Patreon supporters and they said... Unfortunately, because of the rising cost of bills in the UK, because of heating going up, because of gas and electric going up and petrol going up, they had to stop their Patreon support. So I messaged them back and said, that is absolutely never, ever going to be a problem. You always take care of yourself first. You always put your own finances and your own you know, position, your own life situation, your own family, your own friends first. Entertainment should be one of the, the last things you spend money on. It really should. Please, if you've got, you know, like 20 or 30... Josh, what the hell are you playing? We're playing the KFC dating simulator. We're going to get to it in a second, don't worry. If you're playing... If you're, you've got you know, 20 or 30 quid in the bank, I've been there, it sucks. If you've got $50 to last you the rest of the month, that's a sucky month. Don't spend money on YouTubers or Twitch streamers if that's your case. Once you've got all your bills paid off, once you've got nice food, once you've got some nice clothes, once your heating's all sorted, once you have you know that you're stable for the month and you look at your bank account and you think, oh, I've got, you know, a couple of hundred dollars to play around with, got a couple of hundred pounds to spend on some frivolities. Yeah, sub to someone on Twitch. Support someone on YouTube, on Patreon. Support a board game on Kickstarter, that kind of thing. But that honestly should just be the, the last bit. That's also the first bit to cut whenever bills get difficult. So make sure you're taking care of yourself first. Let's get back to trying to ban Colonel Sanders. Do we feed the dog? Pixie Lana, good evening to you. Welcome to the stream. It's the smartest logical way to do things. It really is. This game has one hour of gameplay. The speedrunners have finished this game in like three minutes. I'm going to... I might not even finish it today. Who knows? Who knows? Right, let's just poll this because we need to know. So, do we feed homework, or do we wait and see what happens? I'm pretty sure the dog's going to throw up, but I need to know. Did the colonel already kill you? We have died several times. If someone sent a message to Keanu Reeves, I bet he would reply. I bet he would. You know what? When I'm a multi, multi-millionaire, I will ask Keanu Reeves if he wants to come to my birthday party. You know what I was thinking? 
Like when I was processing that thought in my head, I was thinking it'd be like a really big party. Like we'd book out some kind of park or some stately home somewhere and there'd be a gazebo and there'd be cakes and there'd be lawn bowls and there'd be croquet and there'd be a horse in the distance. And it'd be really nice, you know, like a proper middle class party. No, no. Keanu's going to arrive. It's going to just be him. That's it. And he's going to walk in the house and we'll sit down in the kitchen and we'll put little party hats on and we'll have paper plates and we'll have a, a caterpillar cake that we slice up. Done. That's it. That's it. Do we... Well, oh, wait. 51%. You absolute... What is lawn bowls? <laughs> oh, oh, someone's not middle class enough to be in the stream. Oh, my goodness. How does one, oh, how common of you to not know what lawn bowls is? Allow me to explain what lawn bowls is. First of all, you must prepare the bowls area. The way you prepare the bowls area is you find a large square of grass, about 20 metres by 20 metres, and then you make sure that within a mile radius there are no poor people, because they ruin the game. And what it is, is you throw a little black jack ball onto the grass and then you must roll weighted balls toward the jack. And as they roll, they, they slowly curve either left or right, depending on the way you've rolled them, and they must end near the jack. And if you roll a ball hard, you can knock the other people's balls out of the way. It's beautiful. It's a lovely. Lo balls which are called bowls. The game for retirees. That sounds like bocker ball. Okay, Mike, you can call it bocker ball if you want to, but that just sounds very common. I'm not one for sports that sound common. That's what it is. No. Someone says to me, you know, do you want to play footy? I'm like, no. No, I don't. They say, do you want to play lacrosse? I'm like, mm, yeah, I absolutely. I absolutely do. I've got to you know, keep up my middle class. And then I get to the lacrosse. It turns out you need a horse. And I'm like, I don't have a horse. Sorry. I just don't. Jeu de bowls. Yes, that's the way of doing it. Josh Hayes is way more handsome than Richard Madden. Don't let Richard Madden hear you say that. All right? He was king in the north for a long time. Would you like a spot of badminton? I freaking love badminton. Badminton is like tennis with none of the danger. That's why I like it, because I'm a coward. Tennis... Someone is slapping balls towards you at 100 miles an hour, and I am not really a fan of having balls smashed at me in 100 miles an hour. You can quote that. But badminton, soft little feathery thing, just gently whipped at your face, not a problem. More than happy to have that happen. Please stop, this stream is becoming a bit too British for me. Oh, we can make it much, much more British. <laughs> I mean, I'm very good at it. I don't play badminton. As you have said in the chat, I play goodminton. That's how posh I am. Rugby is the middle-class ball sport. Rugby and football are weird. Because football is played by very upper-class people who are often very wealthy, who pretend they are injured when they aren't, and are often very, very rude to people outside of when they're playing football. Rugby is a bit different. It's played by people who look like they would win a fight against a truck, who pretend they aren't injured when they're basically dead, who are then some of the kindest and most polite people you ever meet outside of the game. Like, you watch a game of football for 90 minutes, and then you try and talk to the footballers afterwards, and they are just rather rude. And you watch a game of rugby for 90 minutes, and it's just a couple of men trying to kill each other. And then you talk to them, and they're just the most approachable, nice, chilled-out people. I mean, I'm just saying I would absolutely hang out with a load of guys that play rugby, because I know for a fact they would take care of me. That's what it is. Right. What was... You know, guys, I can't even remember what the, the poll was. Was it... It was don't give the homework? Was it give the homework? I don't remember. What 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 was the poll again? Do we do we poll it? It was wait. Okay, cool. We're gonna wait to see what happens. Do we poll it again though? People are saying new poll. Okay, hang on. Let's just Okay. Let me just sort this out. Do we Do we repoll or not repoll? We'll do a poll to see if we need to repoll or not repoll. 
That's what I need to know. I'm not doing a poll for answers now. I'm doing a poll to see whether I need to do a poll to get the answers. If you're in the chat now and you think, he's just being a bit stupid. Yeah, pretty much. Don't, don't 50-50 this. All right, don't ruin it. What about cricket? Cricket is that game where you slap the balls, and I am always okay with a bit of ball slapping. Nobody said this stream would be good or bad. This stream is whelming, as I have said before. This stream 100% is whelming. Are you willing to try a new game for Was It Good? Oh, Gothic, yeah. Thank you for the donation. Gothic is already on the list. Gothic is... Right now, the next game on Was It Good is going to be Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate 1, the original one. Uh, we are getting slowly closer to other games. Just give me some time to get there. It might take me quite a while to get there. We do not repoll. Okay, so we do not repoll and we go to wait. Let's carry on. Springle stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs toward the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terence, I told you never to come back here, Terence. I will destroy you, Terence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terence? You would better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has not only been felt not only by Terence, but by any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Um, I apologise for that outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Josh, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before he can go any further... Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted. 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 I was possessed by the spirit of Jonathan Ross there for a second. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirs and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. Oh, he's sad. Miriam, you've made Clank sad. I've only known Clank for a day and a half, but already I would give everything I own to keep him happy. You have literally upset the dishwasher. Does this mean we're going to watch the KFC soap opera? You may do. Cross. Cross, are you aware that you've just donated $100? Because I find it difficult that this is the content that's worth that. There are a lot of other Twitch streamers that are working really hard and I'm just I'm just chatting shit playing a KFC dating game voicing it thank you appreciate that just want you to be aware this is not the best here we go let's carry on you think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger thank you Miriam nobody wants to go skydiving voluntarily People jump out of a plane because if they don't, they might die. No one goes, ooh, this looks fun. I mean, some people do, but they're weird. Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends Jeff and Joan. J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in mid-air as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Beep. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you paddle down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Beep. Can we take a second to admire how frickin' sad that beep was? Like, I'm pretty sure that if you sent me that, if you were the director and you sent me that as a stage direction, and I sent you back... Beep. 
heap, you would feel sad. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep-fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see the entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Is that the students? It could have been. Remember the student who died? We didn't know his name. He was just called the student. That's what it is. Miriam, you and Clank have ruined this. You've ruined school. That's what you've ruined. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. Trademark. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches! See you all in the arena! But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam. You okay? <laughs> okay. I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. Alright, Miriam, look, I know that you're angry, but threatening to smash a mug? There's a line, Miriam. There is a very clearly defined line, and it is ceramic abuse. That's what it is. You don't cross it. Don't cross the streams. Don't, yeah, let's, let's not say things we're going to regret here, Miriam. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. He is silly. You know what? Why is it that the older you get, the simpler insults hurt so much more? That's what it is. If someone walked up to me and just went, you're a really silly person. I feel that would hurt more than them actually trying to you know, offend and swear and be, you know, just pouring vile onto me, you know, horrible, bilious words. I feel that it hurts so much more when it's just simple. And I've said this before, children are honest. So when a child says something to you, you know that they mean it. So one of the worst possible insults is when a child looks at you and says, either you look tired or you look ill. That hurts. You ever gone out thinking you're feeling pretty good? You dressed up nicely? Maybe you put a bit of makeup on. And I want to smash this stereotype. Guys, you can wear makeup. It's okay. I'm on camera or on stage a lot of my life. Makeup's fine. We've all got skin blemishes. We've all got imperfections. And while you aren't less of a person because you've got them, if you feel a little bit more confident because you're wearing some makeup, you go for it. You do that. You make yourself happy. You live your best life. When you've made yourself up, you walk out. You're wearing some nice, sexy clothes and a child looks at you and goes, you look sick. I'm thinking, <laughs> fuck you. I don't say that, but I think it. Ruined my day. Just, Im just immediately, just straight away kills your day. Your vibe is just thrown off. There, that is it. I what was that in your hands? It was uh, Dream Satin Liquid by Maybelline. Not sponsored. It was cheap. Maybe I'm born with it. Maybe it's lighting, green screen, makeup, and a lot of training because I wasn't born with it. There we go. Maybe it... Yeah, you knew. You knew it was. 
Warning, please find your colour match foundation people. Do. Really do. Genuinely do. Right, let's get back to this. What were we talking about? I was talking about something important. Oh yeah, someone earlier said, um, you're not important enough to insult. When you say that to someone, you know, you know, someone tries to insult you and you're like, you're not important enough to insult, that is still trying to insult them. Sometimes one of the best insults is just, I don't know who you are. Like, genuinely. Like, who? I know for a fact that's going to happen. Oh shit, I caught one! So happy to finally catch one of your streams. Zia, welcome. Zara, you've caught one of the best streams. You've caught the stream where we might get to bang Colonel Sanders. Now, you might think that sounds like a strange, strange sentence, but trust me, it's going to get stranger. Would love to stay and watch. How dare you? How dare you, Red Sky? We'll watch the VOD. I guarantee you the VOD will be uploaded sometime soon. Right, here we go. Hello, sexy. You're sexy. I guarantee you are. Don't worry, we know who you are. Bang Colonel Sanders, my favourite second monitor, second tab listening streamer. I'm going to get that minted. First choice for your second monitor. Right, let's go back to the game. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion? Ride off into the sunset without me? Miriam, don't ask questions you don't know what, you don't want to know the answer to. All right? I'm not going to lie to you, Miriam. It's an option. It's there. Don't, I mean, if I might. You don't know me. You don't know my life, Miriam. I, perhaps, that's what I might do. Watching on your phone, good. We might grab that stallion and ride. Also, he will probably bring his horse. Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. Right, game. Are we still in euphemism territory? Have we gone from, are you going to help me win the, the baking competition to... We're planning an orgy ranch. Where are we? Like, this this metaphor, this simile, has gone a long way. And I don't know where you're going with it. Are we going with horses? Are we going with ponies? Are we going with ranches? Are other people being involved? What? Where are we with this? Let's just take a step back and work out exactly what's happened for this specific game. I think we really need to start a commune because the cabal will want to know about this. If it's not Pop, or Clank, or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person, who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest, anyhow. The KFC dating game is getting real, guys. It's getting real. If you are someone with low self-esteem, do not settle for the first person to throw a affection or attention your way. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet the Professor Dog is going to love it. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil counterpart, Ashley. I think that maybe we needed a bit of translation going on here. Because I don't think that beating off Van Van, the man-man, is going to win us this competition. You know, if he's into that, okay. But we need to discuss that after we have dealt with food. <laughs> I mean, it might. Stop it. You stop it. wonder how many clips are going to come out of this particular masterpiece. Too many. Far too many. 
as planned. You begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on, Josh's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders, who obviously walks with a bunch of lotus petals wherever he goes to just spread around. Josh, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualising success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Visualising, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Oh, no. Oh, no. I see. What do we do? Do we ignore it like there was no sound? Great video today. Thank you very much. Never thought about seeing it on your channel. It was worth all the money. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you got your money from... If you spent real money to play Swords of Legends online and you got your money's worth, that's fine. Remember, I will never say that you've had fun wrong. I will never say that you played a game wrong. If you enjoyed it, then you enjoyed it. I just think that you enjoy the best possible product that someone else could make. It seems that when MMORPGs get put out, a lot of the developers take liberties with the quality of the game because they know that the player base will just roll over and accept it. And the more people do accept low quality, the more low quality becomes standard quality. And then whenever anyone else does anything different, stop talking, it's burning. Right, this is how... Look, it's fine. This is exactly how anime goes. We don't need to worry about it. The timer's going off. It will be put. We'll poll it now, shall we? Fine. We'll poll it now. We'll do a slash poll. For you guys that are all like, oh, it's going to burn. The timer's going off. Oh, no. Right. Let's just do a poll. Do we ignore it? Now, do we fess up? All right. There we go. We'll poll. You guys can chill out now. See? Calm. Chill. The poll is going. All we have to do now is wait for that poll to count down and be done. You happy? You happy? Because I was going to make a one minute poll once I'd finished talking. But no, I've made a ten minute poll now. Deal with that. See, now we just have to wait for ten minutes to count down. And you know what that means? That means it's going to burn even more. Don't push me. Don't think you're ahead of me on my stream. Don't give him the satisfaction of the 50-50 meme. You guys are all there. Oh, Josh, it's going to burn. Oh, no, it's burning. Right, we've got time, okay? Listen, we need to discuss other things. Cooking, one of the sexiest things you can do. It really is. You can cook for someone, they consider you sexy. You know why? Because you can provide. You can feed people. And that's an attractive quality. And if you can't cook, it's a very easy solution. Uber Eats or Just Eat allow you to feed people with none of the skill of needing to cook. Okay, right, listen, let me explain to you how to cook. I am quite a good cook. Let me explain. Josh, why did I kill Swords of Legends online? Quest, good combat, get a face bad. I did. I'm sorry. Huel plus Blender. Look, I actually quite like the Huel drinks. I'm just annoyed they haven't got back to me. Like, If there is a Huel stand at the Insomnia Festival in Birmingham, I'm going to have words. I'm going to walk up to the Huel representative and just look at him and be like, the fuck? That's what I'm going to say. And he'll obviously know who I am. That's my biggest fear. Can I tell you my biggest worry about insomnia? Let me tell you my biggest worry. No one turning up for the thing that I'm at. 
imagine that. 20,000 people at a gaming event. 30,000 if they push it. Josh will not read this comment. Toog soup. Ha <laughs> ha. Failed. Imagine me standing on stage with the three people behind me, the amazing members of the party, Callum, Rage and Billy. Imagine standing there and then just being like, no one's here. Is this pre-recorded? Yes. I just occasionally I say, is this pre-recorded? to catch people out who write that. You'll see it later as well, don't worry. If anyone actually did write that just now, complete coincidence. Imagine if I walk out on stage and I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, we are going to play some Dungeons and Dragons, and there's just no one there. The crowd is just one dude with a camera, just waiting. He wasn't even invited. He thought this was a, he thought this was like a theatre, like a cinema. He was just going to film something. That's what he was going to do. You know what, no, it's not even pre-recorded, it's not yet recorded, it's post-recorded. That's what it is. This actually happens in the future. This is a guide for exactly what I'm going to do next stream. That's how it's going to work. I like that Josh's outfit looks like a barman's. Yeah, that's what I was going for. I go for slightly upper class, kind of cocktail bar kind of thing, cosy club style stuff. I like that. Is Dungeons & Dragons the laziest name for a game ever? No, I'd probably say game is a pretty, pretty lazy, lazy one. Only one guy in the crowd just going, you ruined terror. Oh, can you imagine if I walk out and the crowd is just entirely full of Earth 2 people? I will know that they are Earth 2 people because they'll all be holding tiles of JPEGs of pictures of Earth. That's what they'll be doing. I'll know exactly where they are and how to get there. Have you ran and escaped from your RuneScape addiction? Look, I've explained this before. No one ever quits RuneScape. You just take long breaks. In a couple of years' time, I will probably inevitably get drawn back to RuneScape. Who is daring to tag me on Twitter? Like, how... Who do you think you are tagging me on Twitter? Oh, it's someone responding to my tweet that I put out about a video. That's fine. You're okay. You're allowed to do that. That's totally okay. People message me on Twitter all the time. All the time. Standing there with, I got resources, Earth 2 is a real game. Shane Isaac standing on stage with his entourage. This is AI generated, not pre-recorded. I switch from RuneScape to Melvor Idol. Oh yeah. Oh, interesting thing actually, guys. I might need your advice with. I got a potential contact with Jagex about me one day, maybe, and this is in the future, one day maybe going to visit the Jagex headquarters, where they make RuneScape. And I thought, how could I you know, kind of mix that in with a worst MMO ever or a video? Now, people have said vlog. I think we can do something funnier. Imagine this. This is my idea right now. Now, this might take a this might take a couple of months for me to prepare and to plan, but I think it would be funny. Imagine me doing a worst MMO ever on RuneScape. And four or five minutes into the video, it cuts to a shot of me in my room like this, recording the audio into the microphone. And as I'm doing that, someone sneaks up on me from behind and kind of drags me out of frame. And then the screen goes black, and then I wake up and I'm in the Jagex headquarters. And basically what happens is they've realised I was doing an episode on them, so they have kidnapped me to make sure the episode never gets released. So I then need to attempt to escape from the Jagex headquarters using the skills relevant in RuneScape. So thievery to get out of the room and stuff, and then cooking if I'm getting really hungry and something, and strength to move things out the way. I think that'd be really funny. Now, I can't guarantee that will happen. I want to keep that a secret for a long time. People are going, spoilers! Look, there's a thousand people in this chat. There's going to be at least, what, two or three hundred thousand people that watch the video? You guys are the elite. You guys are planning this with me. I think it could be funny. I think it could really... It's a lot of work to pull off. What it would need is me, a preset script, two cameramen, Possibly a laptop on the day in order to download the footage too, but I think we could do it. I definitely think we, if you do agility for eight hours in the video, I think I could do it. As long as the music is Sea Shanty 2, I will put something very obvious to it. 
Josh Strife streams Leet. Leet Cow Killer. Absolutely. Time does pass fast. You've subbed for three months. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, man. In before this gets clipped and put on YouTube. That's fine if it does. I'll contact Jagex and be like, hey, let's do something. Easier option kind of thing fully. You are very angry about something and go to the HQ to be angry. Oh, yeah, people are like, you know, oh, if, if you think... It's just a message from Jagex. If you think you can do better, do better. <laughs> just me like, fine. Just travel all the way to Cambridge, walk in and just start coding something. Like, done. There we go. Now you can pet the dog. I'll make it happen. You guys have still got three minutes on this poll, by the way. Three minutes on the do we poll at the top. Just show up and start working. They'll be like, uh, so Mod Josh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just modifying the corporeal beast, so if you hit it with a you know, granite maul, it stops attacking you and I can kill it free at my own leisure. That doesn't sound like something a Jagex moderator would do. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. That's a very specific joke that I think a couple of people will get and a couple of people out of that, uh, they might not know. Josh playing Elden Ring when? Look, I finished Elden Ring a few days ago. Dual katanas, plus ten mimic, bleed, bleed, bleed. Did I enjoy playing any other Final Fantasy game? I mean, yeah, I think that the gacha game Final Fantasy All the Brave on mobile is, is brilliant. I think that's definitely the spirit of Final Fantasy. Throwing endless money at a game until you maybe get the guys that you want to attack enemies that have no real relevance to the plot. There we go. Do I have any tabletop RPG of preference aside from D&D? Yeah, I, I like just making it up as I go along. There we go. Just make it up. People always ask me, so what's your, what's your rules? Just kind of think about it. Make it up. Do I want to moist? I hope someone asks me that at Insomnia. I really do. Guys, you've failed at this poll, by the way. 301 people have voted for Fess Up, and 176 have voted for Ignore It. Like, it's 37.63. Unless everyone suddenly starts to vote for Ignore It, there is no way you're getting that back to a 50-50. I mean, I've mentioned it now to see if you can, because I, I'm kind of rooting for you. You know, I think you can, but we're breaking with tradition. Look, tradition is just peer pressure from dead people. You might hate it, but that's what it is. Tradition is peer pressure from dead relatives. As horrible as it thinks to sound, I guarantee that's exactly what it is. Right, we are fessing up. Here we go. Fess up about your practice dish. Okay. Okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualising. Yeah. I've been a DM for 15 years and freeform has generally always worked. Yeah, pretty much. Just make it up as you go along. People always say to me, oh, Josh, that was a great adventure. How long have you had that planned? I'm like, I still haven't finished planning it. Uh, we're making it up as we go along. I don't know if my D&D my adventures are more streaming or loading, but they are definitely improvised. That's the best way it goes. Random bullshit go. It always amazes me when people are, people are really confused. They're like... Oh, Josh, how how long have you had that planned for? Like, When you opened the door in that corridor, what was in the room was as surprising to me as it was to you, and I was making it up. Isn't D&D &D just make-believe with spreadsheets? Yeah, Dungeons & Dragons is basically just a load of people sitting around hallucinating a group adventure. That's what it is. D&D &D is mass hysteria and hypnosis without the drugs. Imagine a load of stoners in a room all describing a crazy adventure to each other and then just take away the drugs. And that, that's D&D. &D. If you say to someone, yes, we're going to go and hovel together in a, a damp, dark basement somewhere and just imagine that we're off in a magical fantasy land, people are like, that's fair. Fair play. Let's just do that. Yeah. Text-based drugs. That's the best way to describe Dungeons & Dragons. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You know... Oh, you knew it was a pot pie? Just from the smell? <laughs> Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all-butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. 
Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can tell that it was made with a heaping of TLC. For those of you unaware, that's tender loving care. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking. And I could eat this all day. Where have you got the chicken staff from? Because you were not holding that. And your posture is not as straight as it was before. You know what? I don't want to know. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. Where, where did the staff come from? Don't ask questions that you don't want to know the answers to. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese, plus the pot pie you've been practicing, are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Achillet are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Again, if you have just joined us, yes, that is a Jojo reference. And Achillet is actually a joke because she uses too many letters in her name. The staff was supporting his spine. That's true. That is correct. Here we go. You guys ready? I'm ready. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. I see. So she's going to be like super detailed on hers. Super duper detailed. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, registered trademark, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts out at a full 10 out of 10, with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Someone's just said, what on earth is this? Allow me to show you the pinnacle of gaming. This is I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a KFC dating simulator. We have gone through cooking school in an attempt to seduce Colonel Sanders. Don't run away. Stay with me. It's going to get better. Potentially worse, but eventually better. This is a memory we can all have together. You might not want it, but we are all having it together. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash! I'm not sure that's meant to be wash or wash, but it's definitely something. Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, Basta Blaster! That's not a move you want to see outside of some kind of... I've seen enough hentai to know where that's going. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula! Yes, I can understand that he is... Yeah, she is definitely the shallow personality spatula. Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Yeah, he's seen Kill Bill. He has definitely seen Kill Bill. The game is so self-aware. You have to watch Superman actor Colonel Sanders' movie. I will watch as many of things as I can. Clank is finally speaking. Is this game part of the training at KFC? Yes. Yeah, if you don't finish this game, you don't get to work at KFC. In fact, every single person that has ever worked, and indeed still does work at KFC, is an active fan of this game. And they like nothing more than when you come in and just start talking about this game. They love it. Do it. I guarantee that they'll be super happy. You just walk in, start talking about this. I'm currently filling out my KFC application. Hey, yeah. If you got, you know what? If you walk in and you ask nicely, they actually let you play this game on one of the the TV screens above the order desk that normally has a menu on it. They give you a controller and everything. You have to ask nicely, 
but I guarantee it happens. Wait, when did Clang learn to speak English? It's the singularity. As was foretold. We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. So hang on, have we have we stopped worrying about cooking and now worrying about Clank becoming sentient and fighting back? Self-destruct Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spellbook out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Guys, we need to make... Sorry, my cat has fallen asleep on the bed and is snoring really loudly. I don't know if the mic can pick it up, but I can hear this very... I mean, I'll, I'll move the mic a little bit and we'll just see. We'll face it toward the cat. Hang on. I don't know if you can hear that tiny little purr. Could you hear that tiny little purr? I can hear fireworks. Hang on. We'll, 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 I mean, I don't know if I can actually get the, the camera, unfortunately. It's a little bit out of range. Listen. Turn the mic gain up a little bit. This is the best part of the stream. I know you all love this. Everyone's here for this. It's okay. I'll turn the mic gain up and I'll turn the camera toward the cat. That is a tiny bit of snoring cat. I'm trying to like block it out, but yeah. There we go. Tiny, tiny cat. Tiny cat snore right there. She's just super cuddled up. It's a spare bed next to me, and she's just properly buried herself in all of the all of the covers and the duvet. She's an old lady by now. And obviously, I love her. But my god, she wakes up at like six in the morning and just screams for food. The problem is that she's going old, and she's going a bit senile, and as a cat they can go senile. She forgets where I am in the house, and she forgets where her food is, so sometimes she'll just kind of stand in a room and just scream really loudly, and I have to walk downstairs, and she'll look at me and stop screaming, and I have to pick her up and just put her next to where her food is, and then she'll kind of look at me, and then she'll just eat, and then she'll look at me, and I'll pick her up and put her back on the floor, and then she'll just walk off and fall asleep on the sofa, but she completely forgets. You know what? She used to, and I know I'm going off on a tangent about cats, but I think it's worth it. She used to be able to jump up onto the side where we have the cat food, because if we put the cat food on the floor, the dogs get it. So we have like a little, a bit of the kitchen side is just for the cat that we keep clean and nice and wiped down. The cat will jump up, eat it, and then jump off. And she can make the jump. But she also knows that if she stands at the bottom of the jump and looks at me, I'll pick her up. And she's started to do that now. Like, she'll walk down to the kitchen, she'll stand there, and she'll sit, and she'll look up at where her food is, and then look at me, and then look at the food, and then look at me. And I'm just sat there thinking, I know you can do this. I know you can jump. Because when I'm not around, you get to it. But fine. I will... Yeah, you know what? She has trained me. She has trained me better than I've trained her. When she, sc when she screams for food, I go and feed her. Doesn't matter. Two o'clock in the morning, I will get up, I will be annoyed, I will be sleepy, I will be angry, but she will get fed. Spoiled cat. Absolutely. 100% spoiled cat. What are we doing? Are we casting a spell, or are we not casting a spell? Are we polling this? I think we should poll this. So, do we cast spell, or do not cast spell? Remember that we've done most of this without magic. We've done a lot of this without magic. I accidentally set that for 10 minutes. I did not mean to set that for 10 minutes. Let's talk about my cat for nine and a half minutes, and then we will return to that. I've, like, I was genuinely not prepared to just keep going for 10 minutes. I'm gonna have to start pulling out the dinosaur mug at some point and just doing some more dinosaur stuff. Right, you know what, guys? I'm out of ideas. This is your stream for a bit. 
you go. I've been talking for an hour and 40. If this were a conversation, I would have absolutely dominated one side of it. Excrovite. Hello, Josh and guys. How are you doing? Oh, Crevite, I am glad you are here. I am out of ideas. This is your stream now. Off you go. You're going to need to start start picking some ideas pretty soon, Extra Vite. We are. You're going to need to keep this conversation flowing. Bust out some dance moves. I I know all of the dance moves. I really do. I've explained. You've seen the clips on Twitter. You've seen the clips on on the on the Sage channel. You know more pickup lines for gamer girls. Gamer girls. How do you pick up a gamer girl? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm. I like to consider myself a bit of a gamer. You know, I've played Tetris. I've played Pong. I've input the cheat code to get all the money at The Sims. Let me explain how you pick up a gamer girl. First of all, it's very important to understand that girls, they don't play real games, do they? You know, girls play The Sims, they play Nintendogs, they play Dark Souls 2. Not games that we would consider games. You know, they play global thermonuclear warfare. They play the Spongebob game. They play the Simpsons Hit and Run, but only emulated, so you don't get all the sound. That's what they play. They play The Sims 2. They play, I mean, that's all girls do. Play Sim, eat hot chip and lie. That's the gamer girl. So when, look, have you ever actually seen a girl, tell me right now, have you ever actually seen a girl sitting there with a controller in her hand playing a game? No, you haven't. You've only seen pictures or videos where that is a situation that starts the whole scenario, and I guarantee if you look at the detail in that video, the controller isn't even turned on. The TV isn't turned on, it's not plugged in. It's not even a it's not even a, a video game console. It's an upside down air fryer. That's what it is. Okay. Let me explain to you how you pick up a gamer girl. It depends on what the what the girl is playing. I mean what what um I mean basically what gamer girls love is they love having their knowledge tested on whatever they're playing because that lets them prove that they're a real fan. I, I guarantee this works. So, like, if you see a girl playing Mario, you've got to walk over and say, oh, name all the Mario games. And you know what? They fucking love it. Because then they get to show you their true knowledge. And you are actually doing a service to gaming kind. Because if they turn around and go, oh, I, I, I don't actually know any, any Mario game, they immediately, legally have to put the controller down and leave. It's like if you see anyone wearing a band t-shirt. You're allowed to walk up to them and go, oh, you like the band? Who was the third drummer? Who did the bassist date three years ago? That's what you need to know. Because if they don't know, they don't truly love the game. So basically what it is, is if you see a girl playing a game, walk over, ask them about the game. Walk over, ask them about all of that. If if they're playing World of Warcraft, walk over, ask them if they are grinding for their boyfriend. Ask them if they're, you know, gathering some supplies. Ask if you can if they need any help. That's what it is. See? They love it. They absolutely love it when you assume that they don't know what they're doing. Stop voting, boys. It's a oh for fuck's sake. Okay, let's go back to picking up gamer girls. Josh, you're going to get cancelled. I would like... I would... Gamergate. You know what? That's one of the best ways to pick people up in general. I'm not going to talk about politics because I am not brave enough for politics. But I guarantee the best way to get a gamer girl attracted to you is to ask their opinion about really, really kind of diversive politics, that kind of stuff. Things that would really, you know, divide people. That's the best way to do it. 
It's the best way to start any kind of conversation. My girlfriend plays Elden Ring and I don't. How am I supposed to ask her questions about it? Okay, Raz, look. The next time you see your girlfriend playing Elden Ring, I need you to really, really look at the screen. Because if you look long enough, you will realise she's actually playing very heavily modded Nintendogs. No girl can play Elden Ring. Physically impossible. Only Nintendogs. It's all they can do. And The Sims. That's what it is. If Josh ever gets cancelled, I'll make 100,000 Twitch accounts. Uh, sometimes they'll play Pokemon. Sometimes they'll play Pokemon. That's what it is. It's basically Sims with combat. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Where is Billy when you need her? She's, I'm, I'd assume she's playing Nintendogs. That's is what I would assume. Sometimes you'll find a girl playing the Mary Kate and Ashley dress up game. Sometimes Barbie race and ride. Sometimes Stardew Valley. Right, so gamer girls, how does a gamer guy pick you up? Maybe if a guy walked over to you and said, like, hey, are you are you looking for a player too? And you'll look back and go, I'm playing Dark Souls. It's one player. Don't even offer any explanation. Are you looking for a player too? I'm playing World of Warcraft. There are millions of people online over the week. So no, not really. Just use Raid Finder. Just use Group Finder. I don't need you. In fact, if anything, if you started playing the game, it would take you weeks to get up to where I am to be useful in any way. You know what I think is really annoying is... I think it's limiting that girls can only play healers. It's a shame. I mean, obviously the guys play the tanks and the damage dealers because they are the difficult roles, and we have to play them. But... In a way, it's nice that MMORPGs give girls a thing to do. You know, they put their healers in there. Can you imagine if someone joined the chat right now and didn't know that I'm just being incredibly facetious? Just joking about the whole thing about this. Just baiting those comments in. Just people... Do you want me to fight you? I mean, you can't fight on The Sims. If we did, Nisa. Nisa, are you a gamer girl that's annoyed at me? Because I've played The Sims. If you're annoyed at me, we can just high-five until you forgive me. That's a mechanic. That's how it works. If you want, we can fight on, like, Dead or Alive or Tekken. I would suggest Tekken, because it's a really good fighting game. But we can do the Dead or Alive beach volleyball, if that's something that you prefer to do. You know, the easier one. Unless you're playing Final Fantasy XIV, I guess. Oh, all the cat girls. Look, MMORPG. Many men online role-playing girls. That's how it works. The Earth 2 guy is going to clip that and say, See, I told you, those woke YouTubers are the bad people. Ah, oh, DOA Beach Volleyball has the best plot. It has a lot of plot. That's true. You're, you're not wrong with that. Right, the poll right now is 218 to 220. Two people just ruined it. This is the dark... I really hope that if I ever do meet any of you in real life, you know that I've been taking the piss. You know that. You completely get that. Who thinks that Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver, was a good game? Who thinks Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver, had either a really good plot... Or some really good voice acting. You know who wrote that? A girl called Amy Henning. She wrote it and she directed it. And it was freaking amazing. And you know what Amy Henning went on to do after that? Uncharted, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3 and Uncharted 4. One of the most talented women in the video game industry created some absolutely phenomenal games. That's not a joke, that's just true. Do not cast the... Oh my god! 257 to 256. Literally one vote. One vote in it. 
Now, Amy Hennig actually did quit after the Uncharted 4 because Uncharted 4 changed the ending from what Amy wanted it to be. Amy wanted an ending that was a little more, shall we say, final. And they wanted to leave it open for something. So we do not cast the spell. We do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Oh, hang on. Hang on. What she'll do is she'll just wait there for me until I open the door for her. She knows. It's my cat. She knows that if she waits there for long enough, I will eventually leave my post and let her out the room. Come on, you. Yes, I know. You're hungry. Go on. There is food downstairs. I'll come and find you in a minute. Ugh. There I go, tearing through reality again. I do I do enjoy tearing reality apart every now and again. Just to show you that there's a room back there. There is stuff. Things exist every now and again. I have no issue... No... Being that caked up. Oh, guys, okay. Let me tell you something. Right. If you are going to insomnia, I bought a suit just for insomnia. The trousers on that suit, they make my butt look amazing. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I was in the suit shop. I tried these trousers on. I put the belt on. I stepped out. There was a full-length mirror. I was like, damn! I am doing squats. It's the walking on the treadmill. It's the... It is the incline that I'm walking up. It is the squats. It is the bridges. That's what it is. Did I buy special pants too? I may have gone to TK Maxx. I may have bought some of their special bamboo fiber pants. You gotta take care of your butt, guys. You really do. You gotta you know, if you're gonna be wearing clothes all day, make them clothes that make you look sexy. Come on. So I was walking in, and I put these trousers on. I thought, God damn. God damn, they work. They do work. I'm fulfilling my mission to say nice ass. Can we watch? Yes, actually. You can, because the D&D &D game at Insomnia is most likely going to be recorded. Guarantee. Right, let's go back to the game. Here comes the fanfics about your butt. There are already fanfics about me and Callum Upton. Genuinely. There have been fanfics written about them. And I've read them on stream. I've been wondering, did you take your channel photo or was it pro work? Actually, Nasco, that was a, uh, a candid shot by a professional photographer while I was on stage rehearsing for a play. I was in a play a couple of years ago. I was playing Dorian Gray in The Portrait of Dorian Gray. And I was on stage wearing a vest and I was doing all the research and I had the, the script in my hand. I was still holding it still. And I knew the photographer was to the side. So I was reading and I just kind of went across to him and as soon as I did he took a photo straight away and the hair was kind of it was the light was behind it and it was black and white and it was just sweet Dorian Gray was actually a book written about me I'm about 400 years old and I decided that playing the KFC dating game on Twitch is the best use of my time you know when you're an ageless immortal vampire you really do run out of things to do quite quickly that's the problem that's what it is that's why you just start doing look you know that Snoop Dogg just does a load of random shit? And I think that Keanu Reeves does now as well. These people, they are people who have completed the main quest in life and are now going back and doing all of the side quests. That's what it is. I am absolutely convinced that Snoop Dogg has done every main quest. And he's, he's opened his quest log and he's like, I've not been on a cooking show. May as well go and do that. He does that. And then he's like, I've not been on a TV show. May as well go and do that. He does that. He's like, I've not done an advert for a fast food company. Go and do that. He's just ticking off all the shit that he hasn't done. Nicolas Cage. He's rich beyond measure. And he's like, well, I'm going to buy a dinosaur skull. Why not? Why not, Nick Cage? You do that. You live your best life. Let's keep going. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. It's a subtle wink right there. You guys see that? I'm going to do it again for you, in case you were. In case you missed it. I'll even do it just for you. You ready? I'll just be like, uh, be like a... 
See, little flirtatious wink right there. Meow, the um, the cat was outside. Thanks. I believe in you, Josh. Oh, I believe in you, Colonel Sanders. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, Josh, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. Yeah, Miriam, I don't want to bang you, all right? Look, your affection is appreciated, but affection from someone that you want to jump into bed with just means so much more. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's the secret ingredient. The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. <gasps> it is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. If you've just joined us, there is a lot of context that you need for this to make sense. And if you've if you've just joined us, it's going to be a lot easier if you watch all of the VODs up to this point. In another way, it might be easier if you don't. Here's the law. This is a KFC dating simulator taking the piss out of dating simulators and regular video games. Halfway through our dating simulator progress to pursue Colonel Sanders, we were attacked by a spork monster, which we beat in a fight, but then we let live because we are a kind and merciful god. And now Steve has returned to, I hope, help me. Steve? Wait, what happened to Borco? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borco had the day off. But you have conjured Steve. And I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV, you crazy kids, and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? Yeah. Yeah, grab a, grab a chair. Grab a Magic the Gathering commander deck. Bring a drink over. Grab a slice of pizza. Why not? Josh, your chat, myself included, are thirsty for you. How does that make you feel? Well, you need to hydrate. All right? Everyone needs to be hydrated. You need to go and get yourself some water. That's what you need to... Can you hear her? Can you, can you hear her? Meowing, repeat. She will keep doing that until I get her food. That's what will happen. I guarantee... Hang on. Hang on a tick. I might have got a plan. I think we can do something with this. Hang on. Okay. Don't you worry, guys. Got a plan. It's a good plan. Don't go anywhere. You're going to like this plan a lot. Don't ever say that I don't do anything nice for you. I know, I know. Yes, yes, you get treats now. Come on. Those are the treats you like, aren't they? See, occasionally she gets treats. Just every now and again. Not all the time. She's very old, so she's missing a couple of teeth, which means it takes her a while Takes her a while to really start chewing. You are very insistent now, aren't you? You know that I've got the treats, don't you? Go on, there you go. Okay. That is all you get, though, because... No, there's no more. Because you are getting to be a fat cat. And you need... She's going to keep bothering me now. <laughs> okay, do that again. Do that again, and I may... Okay, that's fine. 
that is allowed. Give her one more, just because she patted the little bag. Give her the treats. Come on then. Go on. Is that enough for you now? You happy? Let me let you downstairs next time. Okay. Come on. There we go. Are you happy now? Are you happy that we've treated the cat? Is this good? Now my cat wants... Josh has been trained so well. I have. That is adorable. That is... <laughs> she knows now. She knows that... Did you just, did you see the fact that she knocks that and then looks at me? You can have more tomorrow, okay? Come on, let's get you downstairs, we can get you up. Don't go anywhere, we'll get you some more tomorrow, come on. Come on, let's go downstairs. You guys are so spoiled. You are more spoiled than she is. You are more spoiled than she is. That's what it is. Just for that, you are now both on first and second monitor. The strange background and a guy feeding a cat in a messy place. Hey! Hey, this is my room. It's allowed to be messy. That's okay. Hey, Josh, I love you. Was it good series? Any chance for the next games like Hades? I like Hades. Hey, he's going to be played. The next game on Was It Good is the original Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate 1. Oh, I love that game. So yes, there will definitely be the original Baldur's Gate on the Was It Good series coming up, hopefully within about a week. It's just taken so long to edit because Baldur's Gate is a, a ridiculously long game to try and make a video out of. There is so much. Original or enhanced edition? Ooh, Slayer, good question. How about this? I will be playing the Enhanced Edition, but because I have played the original before, in fact, I have the original literally in a box over here. I've got the original Baldur's Gate just there. You can see it, but it is there. I will actually be making a video where I not only play the Enhanced Edition, I point out the differences between the Enhanced Edition and the original, such as the CGI cutscenes of the original and the comic book style cutscenes of the Enhanced Edition and all the extra quests that have been added in in the Enhanced Edition. Can I just point out that I like the original CGI cutscenes much more than the redone cartoon comic style cutscenes. I think the original CGI cutscenes are brilliant and they should have kept those in the Enhanced Edition. I really do think they should have done. You distracted me with the cat and I missed an entire cutscene. Ah, don't pretend that you didn't prefer the cat. I see. You've had all the vids in the last week, got to go to sleep now because I've worked on my so you want farm. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Snow. I appreciate that. You have a good night. Right. Your jeans really ruin the immersion of your waistcoat. Well, I've told you before that I don't actually have legs. I have one of those spider-style things like the bad guy from Wild Wild West. But sometimes I do have to stand up. But look, I when I go to places physically, I do wear smart trousers that make me look smart. I don't always wear jeans. I'm just... You know, just I'm just rocking in the jeans today. Every now and again, you've got to rock some jeans. There's nothing wrong with a good pair of jeans. Don't you be jean-shaming me. How dare you? The wickedy wild, wild west. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Right, here we go. Back to the Spork Monster, the game that makes sense. I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscrossed some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? Yeah, yeah, you guessed it. Sorta. Look, if you're here, would you mind tossing me some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? Can you imagine... Oh, this is like... You know when you accidentally call someone on the phone or you accidentally FaceTime someone or you accidentally send someone a message? And then you've kind of got to just 
keep the conversation going and they're like, hey, did you mean to call me? And I'm like, no, but let's catch up while we're here. This is that situation. This is what happens right now. First time on your stream, new you from Asmongold. I'm impressed by your eloquency with words. Thank you, Hyperlight. I do do the word good. <laughs> I said do do. I'm going to give you guys a second to appreciate how fantastically clever that setup for that joke was. Not only was it do the word good, but the fact that I managed to get doo-doo into it. Occasionally, I've got to just pat myself on the back because there's no one else in the room to do it. And the cat's downstairs and she doesn't love me unless I have treats. Let's be honest. Right. You can't stop me. You're on my main monitor. I can stop you. I will be there very soon. You have no idea. Here we go. I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country, you can feel spork monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it would probably be lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I'd fallen asleep during scare tactics class and when I woke up. You toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. I feel a bit shit now. I feel like... Look, Steve, I get you. If that happened, I'd have to pull him aside and say, look, I want to hear this, but right now... I need to focus on this. But you are my priority afterwards. Steve, I'm coming back to you, Steve. Don't you worry. Steve didn't deserve that. You know, Steve, we're going to get Steve into the Shadow Cabal. He's going to be okay. I'm on my, I'm on your 4K 55-inch TV. Look, I'm only streaming at 720. I probably look pixely. I probably look very grainy, which is good. Because you can't see the imperfections on the skin. I'll tell you what. People go, Josh, why don't you buy a high-definition webcam? I'll tell you why. The benefits of low-definition streaming. That's exactly why. Twitch says you're 1080. <laughs> what Twitch says is not what I'm streaming at. If I want to stream at 60 frames a second, which I do, I go for 720. Otherwise, I put the webcam at 1080. I'll tell you what. Whenever TV or DVDs switched from standard definition to high definition, we very quickly realised that a lot of people, especially famous actors, have imperfections, and that was good. New French guy here. I spent 2,000 hours in Marvel Heroes back in the day so I can relate to the worst MMO series. I'm just glad you enjoy it. Jude, you could be ugly AF. I'm in for the jokes and the way you are, not for the looks. Shocks is the way it should be. And this is what I've said to people before. Look, if you're ugly, you better be funny. Because if you can make people laugh, most people laugh with their eyes closed. And the longer they spend around you with their eyes closed, the less they realise you're ugly, and then you whisk them into bed. That's how it works. It's just maths. It's just maths. It is. Learn to be funny. Learn to be really funny. Can we see your pants? Highlighted message. I appreciate the fact that you've highlighted the message. You know what? That shows commitment. Right there. That, uh, that shows a lot of commitment. I mean, are we talking pants as in, like, the American version, which is just trousers? It's just jeans. See? It's just jeans. It's just regular, good old Primark jeans. Primarney. That's what you need to do. Walk in, pair of jeans for a fiver. Fantastic. I'll take those. Can we see your feet? Oh, and in fact, I'm, oh, I'm not even wearing my Batman socks today. I really wish I could be wearing Batman socks. I had a choice this morning. I could have put Batman socks on. I could have put regular black socks on. I went with regular black. It's boring, isn't it? It's boring. Why is it called a pair of jeans? Because there's two of them. You put one pair on one leg, one pair on the other, thread the belt through all of them, and then wear a pair of underpants over the top. So each of the jeans has a spare leg if the leg you're wearing rips. It's not a hard thing to work out, is it? Come on. Can we see the back of your head? No, no, Nicole. I'm doing like a Voldemort thing right now where I'm kind of, I'm helping an evil entity work and uh, they're, they're a bit camera shy. So they need to just be facing that way. What martial arts am I into? Do you mean what martial arts did I teach? Because I, I'm into all of them. I like looking at martial arts and say, thinking, 
yeah, that is a good way to, to, to beat somebody up. You can't do the Voldemort thing, you have a nose. I'm doing it better. You know, we're, we're slowly cultivating a different face back here. That's what it is. It's actually, um, it's actually Rowling's face herself. She's trying really hard to build up some positive press recently. Did I ever play Fate the Traitor? I did not. It's the Cabal face. Oh, that was a very specific joke that I really appreciate the fact that people got. Can I become Asmongold on the weekends? I can try, but I've got to, you know, find the same shirt, that kind of stuff. Right, do we summon extra power from deep down within, or do we give up and drop out of culinary school? That's... what do we do? That was one heck of a burn. Thank you. Thank, I thought it was Spiff's face. Right, can we just point out that the Spiffing Brit premiered a video at exactly the same time that I premiered my video? The Cabal will hear about this. I'm going to have words with Spiff. The fact... stealing views, man. You know what I should do? I should react to Spiff's video. But I shouldn't even play the video. I'm not even going to give him the view. I'm going to react to what I think he made. You know, he doesn't deserve the view. I'm just going to put it on in the background and just not even play it on the stream. Here's an idea, in all seriousness. People don't like reaction streamers because they steal views off the original video. Here's my idea. React, but don't play the video on the stream. Give instructions for when to play and when to pause the video, and then anyone watching you react has to have the video up and actually be playing it and pausing it as you say. That way, every view you get, they, in theory, should get as well. Like a quick time event. So I would be like, start the video now. And then I'd go, pause. And then we talk about what they've just talked about and what they've just spoken about, and then I go, right, carry on playing. Pause. And then we go there. Sounds like a hassle. Nobody will follow. That's true. That's true, Falcon. It is a hassle. But it's just a plan. Because right now, right now, there's a big debate going on in the streamer world about whether reaction content is fair. Because think about this. To make a YouTube video takes tens, in some cases, hundreds of hours. To react to that video, remarkably easy, remarkably quick. You're using the tens or the hundreds of hours that someone else has put in for writing, recording, production, editing, uploading, and you are, if you're reacting to it, benefiting heavily from the work they've put in. And this is an interesting conversation because I'm on both sides of this debate. I can see that in one case, yes, it is absolutely taking work that other people have created and benefiting from it. But I can also see that there are benefits that can be provided to the people who are being reacted to. That's... It's a very difficult thing, and I can't deny that I've benefited from reaction content because a lot of people have discovered me through Asmongold. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure all of the videos that Asmongold has reacted to of me, he has made more money off those videos than I have made off those videos. And when you think about it like that, it's very weird. If I put out a video that gets 50,000 views and Asmongold reacts to it and it gets as many or more views, because his reaction is longer than my original video, there will be more ad breaks and it'll be more valuable to an advertiser. So there would there'd be more money generated from that. It's interesting. It's really, really interesting. It's weird. Because... I was talking to another YouTuber called Dark Viper AU. Dark Viper AU, the guy from Australia, he is working on a video right now. Phenomenally interesting video. I can't wait for it to come out. And I've really tried to help him with it about whether React content actually benefits the person being reacted to. Because JXE, again, one of my absolute favorite YouTubers, made a video talking about the Hassan reaction. And Jay's position is. A reaction must be transformative, it must be a conversation, it must be 
it must show that the person reacting is putting as much or more effort and technical skill into the reaction than the person who originally made it, because otherwise you are leeching that person's time and effort and energy. It's it's remarkably... In, why is this a 10-minute poll? No, no, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yes, but you never get the exposure that Asmon's brought to you. You got 50k views, but if Asmon never reacted, that's where it stopped. True, that's it, Derry. But here's a really interesting thing, Derry. Reaction videos don't actually have any major impact on the viewership of the original video. That's really weird. If you go and look at the, the, the release of an original video, a lot of your views, the majority, you get within the first week. If someone reacts to your video two or three weeks later, you will get a very slight bump, but it won't be major at all. People that watch reaction channels don't necessarily want to go and watch the original. And they definitely don't want to subscribe to the original. Yeah, if you've already seen the react, why go and watch it a second time? Why watch the original? That's the, the complex one. Says the man who ripped off the video of an Earth 2 CEO. Oh, Johnny, are we going to do this? Are we going to do... We can do this if you want to do this. You know that I had to take that video down, the first one, because it had copyright music. You know the first cut that Shane uses where he shows you the mountains rising and falling, the footage of which is actually taken directly from the trailer for the Mega Mountains pack on the Unity store. The Mega Mountains pack trailer on the Unity store, that uses royalty-free music, but the music that Shane used in the original one at the start that he shows is from Epidemic Sound called The Way of Things. And when I uploaded it to YouTube using the original footage that Shane had, the video got copyright claimed by Epidemic Sound, which means that Shane's videos can't be monetized either, which is a very strange thing for someone who's, you know, working through CEO stuff. You wouldn't use non-royalty-free music in the kind of stuff you've made. Did I react to Shane's videos? Yeah. Did I steal Shane's effort? Yeah. The difference is I've got my mic set up and my lighting set up and my editing set up and I don't just talk randomly when I'm making YouTube videos without a script. If he wants to sit and talk, it's like when Shane said that all those YouTubers are inadvertently showing everyone the seven rules. And I'm thinking inadvertently means to do without intention or accidentally. That's literally the dictionary definition of it. I didn't inadvertently show the rules. I showed the rules very specifically. But if someone does want to say to me, hey, did you just rip off Shane Isaac? I'll say, no, I'm not selling tiles on a grid. I took a video that he made and reacted to it in the name of critique. Yeah, it's less of a reaction and more of a dissection. That's what I think it is. It, it's definitely more of a dissection. I wanted to watch your video on Earth 2. Probably caused me mental damage. It probably would. It probably would. This is one of my biggest issues with any kind of company that wants to make a video on any kind of YouTube or Twitch or Twitter or TikTok or whatever. This is an entertainment medium. You know who the winner is? The audience. The audience win. The audience win when drama happens, when conflict happens, when battles happen. The audience win when good videos get made. If you, as the CEO of a company, not necessarily Shane, but anyone in general, want to step into the arena of entertainment, the victor will be the audience. If the CEO makes money, great. They can consider themselves winning. If I make money on the reaction, cool. I'll consider myself winning. If the audience are entertained, fantastic. They are winning. You know who's losing? Whoever is spending money when they don't want to. Or when they are not going to get it back. That's the problem. I feel the only losers in this Earth 2 drama are people who don't understand what the promises being made are actually going to turn into. That's what it is. The real losers are the people who aren't entertained and who are potentially being lied to. The winners are the people who are entertained.
And if you're going to step into the arena of YouTube, the arena of entertainment, be prepared to do battle in the way this arena does, which is charisma. Natural 18s on charisma are worth a lot more than intelligence and wisdom when you're on YouTube. You could present the most factual, correct, scientific, educational video in the world. If you can't do it with charisma, no one's gonna watch. It's remarkably easy. Hello, Soup. It's remarkably easy. Johnny, I should become a fisherman. This man has bitten. No, Johnny, what I'm using is your kind of prompt to create content because you'll see that a lot of people in the chat are agreeing, which is great because this means I can keep going off on this rant. Had I not wanted to respond to it specifically, I would have just carried on playing the KFC game. That's what this is here for. What I'm doing is using what you've given me to create entertainment. The winner, again Johnny, is you if you're happy that this is the direction it's taken. The winner is me if people are entertained. The winner is the audience if everyone here is entertained. The only loser is whoever doesn't want me to talk about this, pretty much. I'm kind of like live content farming. That's the way it goes. It's the exact way it goes. Right, what were we going on for? I was talking about something. Talking about being entertained. That was it. If you have no charisma, even if you're correct, people won't care. Why do you think multi-level marketing schemes and con men and stuff like that hire good actors? It's because if you can convince an audience of something, they will want to do it as well. If I let go of all my morals, I would either go and work for a multi-level marketing scheme as a recruiter, or I would start work as a politician. Straight up. That's what I would do. I don't have the lack of morals to get involved in politics. Did the choices ever get polled? No, they didn't. No NFT shilling. Oh, God, man. If I had if I had no morals, I would be selling you NFTs every day. Oh, guys, did you see there's been another NFT thingy? It's, um... Oh, what was it? It's a, a big... It's either a, like a basketball... No, uh, is it Mayweather? Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather has so far endorsed 12... Crypto, Metaverse, NFT things. Recently, he's done another one. So he had the Mayweatherverse and the, the Floyd Metaverse, all this kind of stuff. There was absolutely loads of stuff. But you go and look, he is endorsing everything. Every single NFT scam. This guy has made millions. Go, go on Twitter. Seriously, go on Twitter. He, he released a game. He said it's going to be a Metaverse. NFTs. I would do it. I would absolutely. If I had no morals, I guarantee. Yeah, seriously, guys, Google it. Google it. Tom Morello selling NFTs. That is the most ironic thing. Rage against the machine selling NFTs. I think obviously it's rage against the machine until you realize that raging for the machine will make you a lot more money. Yeah, rage against the machine have officially endorsed NFTs. You can Google it. I'm not making this shit up. You can go and find out. Yeah, you can You can go and find out. You know the whole, you know, killing in the name of? Rage against the machine. The machine being the corporation. Being the man. Being the system. Keeping everyone down. Yeah. They've endorsed NFTs. I know. I know. It wasn't a joke. Mike, Mick, um, Josh, the game. Look, if you're here for the game, you're on the wrong stream. Guarantee it. Absolute guarantee it. Just watch your video on Sword of Legends Online. The voice acting gets better 100 hours in. I hope it does. I re Was that not an April Fool's? Uh, no. No, unfortunately it was not. Right, let's carry on. Do we summon power or do we give up and drop out? Allow me to poll this. But I won't this time do a 10-minute poll. We'll go back to a 1-minute poll. Do we... Do we summon? Summon power? Or do we drop out? I swear to God, if you guys vote drop out. Summon power or drop out? Here we go. I've just realised that when I do these polls, I can actually set it so you can vote multiple times, but you have to pay bits for every time you do that. As soon as I get greedy, I'm doing that. As soon as I wake up and think, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fleece people. 
Fuck it, we're doing NFTs. We're doing bits. My Twitch stream is going to become pay to win. I may as well get a job at GameForge or GamerGo while I'm at it. Who knows? Pay to win polls. Why not? Vote dropout. Is it pay to win with Straubs? It might be. Why do people vote instead of evening out? I don't know. And I mean, right now, people try and get 50 50. I want to summon power. Maybe Earth 2 is hiring. I swear to God. Really appreciated the fairness and respect went to the analysis. Good video. Apparently, EverQuest 2 were really unhappy with it. The EverQuest 2 people were really, really, really annoyed. But I'm, I'm slowly but surely alienating every single MMORPG you know, community. Summon power. We are doing it, ladies and gents. Let's summon extra power. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Josh, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. Oh yes, a while ago, a student straight up died. That's his entire backstory. He doesn't have a name. We just called him Student. The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful, because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. God damn. But don't worry, dear Josh. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude... Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But, Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. Oh, he's a bad boy as well. Oh, man. Oh. Ladies, I don't know if you like bad boys, but I'm bad at everything. That's a chat-up line. You can have it. That's yours. Thank you very much, Ketamine Gaming. For all the subs, that's remarkably kind of you. Ladies, I don't know if you're into bad boys, but I once saw a sign that said no loitering. And you know what I did? I walked inside because that sign was respectful and I had places to be. I was not one to loiter. All right, You can go somewhere else if you want your bad boy. I follow the rules. That's what I follow. Horizons, thank you very much for all the gift subs. That's remarkably kind of you. I mean, do we have to keep going with this now? I think we do, don't we? Right. Let's push on. Why is my mouse occasionally dying? Come on, mouse. I believe in you with this. Mouse. Don't, don't do this to me, mouse. Like, is it legit actually? Hang on, there we go. This, oh, that was, I was whelmed then. Don't die, mouse. I need you. We need to seduce Colonel Sanders. Beat it into submission. Oh yeah, we've got a level 5 hype train launched up. You know what's weird, guys? Many years ago, I would have been I would have been absolutely on the moon that we got a level 5 hype train to launch on Twitch. And now I'm just thinking, when do I get to bed Colonel Sanders? That's that you know what that is? That's a character arc right there. That's progression. That's what it is. But no, in all seriousness, thank you very much for helping. I I will always provide my content for free to everyone. You want to watch the YouTube videos? They're there for free. You want to watch the streams? 
all right, no subs only, no special, you know, treatments. Just come and hang out and we'll chat. Do you know what the Patreons get? Do you want to know what... Do you want to know what my Patreon supporters get? I'll tell you what they get. Ignored. That's what they get. I haven't sent a Patreon message in months. They get their names on the video, and that's literally it. People are like, ooh, you know, what, what do you support? What do you get by supporting Josh? Nothing. Nothing at all. That's what... It's weird. I mean, I've seen, I've seen so many people. Here's how to increase your Patreon support. Here's what Patreons should get. Here's what people who support you should get. I'm like, they're getting nothing and they'll like it. I'm not putting effort in for this. I hardly even respond to the messages. Warm, fuzzy feeling. That's what you get. It's, it's really weird, because I've spoken to so many people that are like, you know, I'm thinking about having like a, a £5 Patreon tier, but I think I should send them a letter, or maybe a personalised picture, maybe I should send them this. I'm like, I've got people that support me for 20 quid a month, and I give them nothing. All they get's a video, if they're lucky. In all seriousness, and this is the, the point, YouTube has ad revenue, I do fine off that. You want to support on Patreon, which means I don't need to take any of the stupid Hey Josh, do you want to you know, advertise this new mobile game? No. No, I don't. Patreon, Twitch, Twitter. You give your money to who you think is worthy of it. If you think I'm worthy of it, cool. If you think I'm worthy of it, but you don't want to give me any, that's also fine. You know, we've we've, we've all been there. We've been like... Yeah, I like this guy, but I don't want to pay for it. I love this TV show, but I want to get it on Pirate Bay. I like Netflix, but only when someone else is paying for it, and I can log in using their details. I get it. It's okay. Sometimes you look and go, oh, I'd love to support that, but uh, I've got no money. That's fine as well. Sometimes you look and go, I'd love to support that, and I've got money but I like money and don't want to give it to that person. That's okay. I understand. You do what you want to do with it. I like the show and it's not on Netflix, so we sail the seas. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. I mean, oh man, I mean, I'm from the generation when you would download LimeWire and give your PC every virus under the sun. I have a really weird memory of destroying my home computer with a massive amount of viruses. And I'll tell you what it was. When my parents first bought a PC, and we had the PC room, because that was a strange thing for some reason. In England, I'm not sure if it was the same in other countries, but in England, computers were quite bulky. So you would not just put a computer anywhere, you would have a specific room for it. And you would put it in the PC room, and you would even say, hey, go into the computer room. A whole room of your house got made into the computer room. Or you just put the PC in, like, the corner of the kitchen, or the corner of the dining room and the living room. That's what you would do, and it would become the computer room. I was in school, and I wasn't a cool kid. I was not a cool kid at all, okay? But I wanted to be. The problem is that the way that I wanted to be a cool kid was by reading those, like, teen music magazines that I thought was cool at the time. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to listen to the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, I'm going to go with, you know, Five. I'm going to listen to the Spice Girls. I'm cool now. And I was reading these, and there was uh, an article. Who remembers buying those shit magazines? I did. And then you progress, if you're a guy, to, like, Nuts and Zoo and FHM, those kind of magazines. And if you're a girl, you progress to, what was it? Like, Heat. <laughs> Who's seen my Heat magazine? Excellent, excellent episode of the IT crowd. Or, um, I don't know, Take a Break, those kind of stupid ones. But I was reading these kind of stupid music magazines, and they were talking about the music video for... Um, I think it was Rock DJ, Robbie Williams' old song. I am properly ageing myself now. Who remembers the Rock DJ music video from Robbie Williams? And I remember, and someone said that basically it's Robbie Williams and he's in a suit and he takes his suit off. 
and he's naked and then he takes his skin off and he's like a fleshy skeleton dancing around and then he takes the muscles off and it's just like him in the middle kind of dancing around just slowly stripping down to nothing and i read this and it said at the back that the backing dancers did that as well and i thought I want to see this, because backing dancers mean females. So I went on the computer, and I went on to LimeWire, and I found a torrent to download Robbie Williams' Rock DJ music video. Who needs security? It's more of a suggestion. So I downloaded it. What I discovered when I downloaded this music video was it came with... A little purple monkey and I thought that's handy a little purple monkey is gonna walk along the bottom of my screen now how cool is that I can even ask it questions and oh this is pretty sweet when I open the Internet Explorer I've got a couple of extra toolbars I can send emojis oh there's even a toolbar there that says email oh that's gonna make things so much easier I can click on the email and Log into my email account. Don't mind if I do. I'm pretty sure that we had to burn that computer. Like, there was... You couldn't come back from that. You may as well just microwave the hard drive at that point. Just take the CPU out the back and shoot it. That's the level we were up to. Who remembers that? No one cared. Internet safety and security was more of a suggestion. All right now. Absolutely more of a suggestion. Now... I would give everything kind of optic scans if I could. And they're like, Josh, how much security do you want? Literally all of it. Everything you can give me. Yeah, and then the PC died. Right, let's get back to trying to bang Colonel Sanders. I wonder, is this Josh Drive Hayes? We all enjoy the real you, or are you a clever, talkative internet persona? Mick, if you met me in real life, this conversation would be exactly the same. The only difference is... I would pause a lot more to let you reply. Because when you're talking to someone, guys, try and listen more than you talk. Because if you talk, you can only explain what you know. And you already know what you know. But if you listen, you might learn what somebody else knows, which is often much more valuable. If I meet you, I'll ask you how your day is going. We'll sit down, we'll get a drink, we'll chat about games, all that kind of stuff. It'd be great. That's what we'll do. This is my daily dose of you are still young, son. If you know, you know. Listen twice as much as you talk. That's true. That's very true. Me and my friends, we always turn into cringe. We both listen. But then you've got to listen the best. Just sit and stare at each other until someone says something. Or that scene in the office where he goes, I am declining to speak first. I'm sure I watched all your videos. Not once did you say Star Wars The Old Republic. Right, Star Wars The Old Republic. I will play it eventually. But I don't want to play Star Wars The Old Republic too soon because it's a big game and I will eventually get through it. It's it's on the list. I guarantee Star Wars The Old Republic is on the list. I'm useless at talking so the conversation wouldn't last long. Zah, that's absolutely fine. Do you want to play a game? I want to play Magic the Gathering? I want to play some Warhammer? You want to just sit and... You know what? If you want, you want we can just sit and play Mario Kart in silence. Two player. Stick it on a Grand Prix for about 10 races. Do that. Chuck a beer or a cup of tea by the side. How about that? We'll just do that instead. I was in town recently, and there is a geek retreat in the town that I live in. It's been open a couple of years now, and there's a, a switch at the back, Nintendo Switch. So I just walk over, turn it on, and I sat there. I had a couple of hours to kill, because I was waiting for a couple of appointments to finish. And I just started playing uh, Mario Kart for a bit. And then someone else walked in and sat down on the sofa. And I just walked over and I'm like, do you want to join in? He's like, yeah, sure, why not? So he took a switch, I took a switch. We didn't say much. We just played Mario Kart together. And you know what? It was beautiful. It was a, it was a gamer moment. That's what it was. It was an actual gamer moment. A wholesome, a wholesome Keanu Chungus gamer moment. That's what it was. Right, let's get back to trying to ban Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever 
laid your eyes on? Am I a mono blue sort of guy? No, I am a... I am a you're not going to have any fun when we're playing type of guy. If you play Magic the Gathering, you know this card. If you don't know this card and you do play Magic, Google it. You're not going to have any fun. Anyone that plays Magic now is looking at me and judging me. Judge Josh, why would you do that? Because it's fun for me. Now, right, here we go. You play Sultai. That's not Siege Rhino. If you can jam Siege Rhino in a deck, it's a good deck. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Guys, guys, I just I tuned in, saw that, and I'm now disgusted. Look. When I play Magic the Gathering, it's not about winning, it's about sending a message. And my message is, don't play this with me. It's weird, because people only tend to play me once or twice. And if I'm in a, like a, like a, a group pod, if we're playing Commander with four people, they look and they go, J just kill, kill Josh's Commander. And other people go, should we kill his creatures, his enchantments, his artifacts? No, 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 they can't do anything. His deck doesn't win, it just delays losing in an annoying, irritating way. The best way to do it. T time's up, students! With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stands tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off-screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Pop. <laughs> I'm flying. It sounds like it's coming from the broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess. Did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? He is... he's just Gaston, isn't he? He is just frickin' Gaston. I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCS colon AL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? My dad just walked into the room and asked what I wanted from KFC. It's working. All the money the colonel gave me, it is paying off, it is... Why am I here? What am I doing with my life? Look, it's a Sunday evening. No one expects anything of you on a Sunday. If I asked, what am I doing with my life, I definitely wouldn't be doing this on a Sunday, would I? We've all made choices that have got us here. Let's just understand and agree that this is where we are now, and we're all trying to make the best of a situation. You wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final pieces. Yes, it's been a long semester. Wow. Three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in savoury soup. But it's also absolutely tiny. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny? Quickly, Josh, read that word and then pronounce it correctly. Narutomaki, I spy a float in this itsy bitsy bowl. None of you even noticed that I had to read the word. 
Yes, Chef. Please, call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. Wow, Josh, I didn't realise that you're fluent in Japanese. Hi. That means correct in Japanese. You are welcome. A plus. Really, do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours? Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a hug. Thank you, Josh, for helping me believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now, describe your dish. I made uni over smooth egg custard in an axe-hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different coloured type of urchin? Yes, sprinkles. Bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is my kind of, kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to pour at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. <laughs> Woof. I'm not barking, because I guarantee someone is going to take that and it's going to end up on a weird fetish site. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to get paid. That's the thing. People always go, Josh, are you going to bark? Well, it depends how good the money is. It depends, I mean, the OnlyFans maybe, the Fansly. Why not? You get one woof. You got a woof earlier. Okay? You, you can just, yeah, I will request it on Patreon. You're welcome to try and you will get ignored like all the rest of the Patreons. Okay? Please be gentle with my cuisine. That's the voice I'm giving Van Van now. Sprinkles gurs. Again, this, this is a fetish thing. I'm not doing it for free. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in. Tongue first. I like your attitude, Sprinkles. But he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this... It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Holy Mitch. <laughs> Misting J, 100 bits. Bark, please. Mitch, after. After the stream, KJ. Okay, J, we'll, we'll sort something out, don't you worry. Dejected. Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified. For glamour? Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to enjoy his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles gener graciously laps up a bowl of milk. See, I said generously there. And I switched it to graciously. Nobody noticed. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashy Lay. It's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. Like, just, if I went to a restaurant and they served that, I would not feel posh enough to be there. I wouldn't. Like if anyone ever serves me three tiny bits of Turkish delight with little sugar hearts and one continuous unbroken sugar spiral through it, I would not feel posh enough. I wouldn't. I still feel, find it really posh when someone brings home Vianetta, which is a very posh ice cream that I actually discovered you can buy in Iceland for a pound. 
It's not posh at all, but it reminds me of posh times. That's what it is. I would say to someone, just bring me an entire Poundland cheesecake. That's what I would be. I'd be happy with that. Just a whole cheesecake. Just bring me, just microwave a bowl of custard and bring me that with a spoon. And I will happily have that. In Turkey, they see through him as a free taster. You seem to have an ounce of shame to not feel posh enough. I am way beyond that point. Just, I just, have made Angel Delight. Freaking love Angel Delight. Absolutely goddamn love it. And if one day my dreams of being a billionaire are achieved, I will still eat Angel Delight. Ferrero Rocher is still posh to me. When someone says Ferrero Rocher, I always assume some kind of ambassador is coming over. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food. At a cooking school. Got toast in your ears or something, Josh? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely good job in cooking it, too. I didn't realise that we were having an eating exam. She's got us, guys. Josh seems to be the most posh streamer. We can change that. I can be cool. I, I can be hip. I can be down with... I, I've got a hoodie somewhere. I'll, I mean, I, I'm not limited to being posh. I'll, 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 do, I'll be tough. Wog one, my bread wren. What's, what's going down in Groove Town? Yeah, yeah, let's gather the homies and head to the discotheque where we will throw shapes on the dance floor and I'll be like, disc jockey, spin those LPs. There is murder on the dance floor. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. Okay? I know all the moves. I know all the all the top. This is painful. This is you know what I love. I love that as I get older, I don't care about being cringe. People always said, "Oh, teachers are so cringe." I was a teacher. We know we are. We do it on purpose. It's a tactic. You want kids to stop doing something? The best thing to do is get involved. I guarantee. All the kids are talking about Fortnite. You want them to shut up about Fortnite? You talk about it. Guarantee. I've been in classes before. I've been teaching primary school classes. All the kids are over there talking about Fortnite. And I walk on, I'll be like, oh, guys, are we are we talking about Fork Knife? And they'll be like, it's Fortnite. And I'll be like, that's that's two weeks, isn't it? They're like, no, it's spelt Fortnite. I'm like, oh yeah, I've played that. Yeah, I've got a I, I've got a Victory Royal before. And they're like, no, it's Victory Royale. I'm like, yeah, we could drop on twisting towers. And they're like, it's not that. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Where are we dropping guys out of the sky coach? I know all this stuff. And they look at you and they're like, they realize eventually that you know exactly what you're talking about. But you do. One of the best ways to troll people is to talk about something, but in slightly the wrong way. And the only way you can do this is if you actually know exactly how it should be said. That's what it is. It's weird. It's like when someone says to me, hey, do you like Final Fantasy XIV? And I'm like, I love Final Fantasy XIV. And they go, it, it's not pronounced that. And I'm like, it is. It is pronounced FFXIV. That's what it shortens to. You can only really annoy someone if you get very small things wrong. I do it with Magic the Gathering a lot. Especially if you're trying to annoy your opponent. You know at the start, you always go untap, upkeep, draw. Make it more complex. When they're like, it's my turn, is it? Fantastic. I'll just untippity tap all these cards here. And then I'll do the old upkeep, whoopkeep. Let's just check for triggers. Doobity doobity do. 
No triggers for me. Any triggers for you? Nope, not a problem. Well, let's just draw a card from my stack of cards that I call the deck library. And then we draw one. On my... That's a good card right there. I'll just put it right into my handly hand hand and then play that. And the partners there just going, just fucking win. And then they scoop up and walk off. And I'm like, judge, I win because my partner left. They're like, it's turn one. I'm like, yes, I am very annoying. Yes. We all have that one friend. <laughs> That's my only win condition. It's Ned Flanders. It's the Ned Flanders speak. Okay, here we go. Didn't realize they were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating, School for the Hungry. <laughs> it's such a dumb game. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? B and Dev, are you winning, son? Mate, it's 20 to 11 on a Sunday evening and there are 1,300 people watching me play a KFC dating game. There are no winners in this chat. Just a lot of losers. What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I'd seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this. This... thing. And completely blow me away. In my 49 years of life... I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. That's Spiff's influence right there. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the glass. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cosy. Sprinkles. DJ Dog is in the house. He is. I'm not going to bark, because some of you will clip it, and some of you will do unsightly, unseemly rude things with it. And that's fine, but I expect you to buy it from my OnlyFans, if that's what you're going to do. You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? That's what I'm calling DJs from now on. Walking up and be like, Hello, Mr. Skilled Turntablist Disc Jockey. That is what we're calling them. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley, look at him. Look at the man. That is, oh, that is such a man. As far as Ashley goes, maybe I'm old, but I need you to understand why 
Personally, and again, I'm going to be honest here, if your pockets, the internals of your pockets, are showing beneath the shorts, you either don't need the pockets or the shorts are too short. Like, no one's using these pockets. They aren't. Girls don't need pockets. We've discovered this. If you're a woman, you don't need pockets. None of your clothes have pockets in them. I used to work for a retail company for a while. You want to know some what I discovered? Children's clothes, babies' clothes, have pockets. Women's clothes do not. Clothes designers value babies carrying things with them more than women. It's horrible, but it's true. Children's clothes have usable pockets. Grown adult women's clothes do not. Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I, I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Wow. He is so lonely, he literally pretended to be dead. Oh. Amusing. And, and now that everyone is together... It's the Spork Monster! He is totally mellowed out! Yeah, shut up, student. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here on out, I'd prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name... Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry. Party Monster. Dejected, Student walks off. Yeah, get out of here, Student. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking. And you know, she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat... A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean... Oh, right, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honour of educating the son of the Chancellor of such and such. Wow, that is nepotism at its finest. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a far away planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? Knock off Boone, thank you for all the gifted subs. I hope that you are enjoying this stream. Our best friend banged an alien, and the alien is also a cooking utensil, and the school is run by a dog. It needs context. You'll get it. I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. That was some serious truth bombs. Guys and girls, read that sentence. I have just begun to figure out who I really am. This isn't the time to devote my life to figuring out who you are. God damn, Miriam, you go. You know your worth, you know your value. We should all know that. It's not your responsibility to help other people figure out who they are before you have figured out who you are.
you're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. I would like to ask you one question. What's the meanest thing you've said to someone that upon reflection you regretted? And why did you regret it? The meanest thing I've said to someone. Like, I mean, I said mean things when I was a kid. But I can't remember any of them. I think when I was about 13 or 14, I realised that just saying mean things in general was a bad idea. But as a kid, I don't know, what's the... I think I told someone that Jackie Chan Adventures was stupid. I regret that because it's not. It's a great TV show. That's what it is. Thank you for a truly relaxing afternoon. I hope this chum this just comes through as 15... It doesn't. It, you've ruined it, study cases. You wanted to cheer as 1,500. Instead, you cheered as 1,000, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Oh, you, oh the, uh, the complexity that you... The needless complexity that you've added on to that. So no, I can't think of anything. But if I can, I will let you know. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. He even looks... He looks dapper. He looks chilled. He looks chiselled, for one. 1,500 individual bits. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? Who knows? No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Josh, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person. Off the top of my head, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, to name just a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes. I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my hundredth franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Josh. How sweet. We'll work and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well... Um, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is your best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other life? The life of an entrepreneur? I... I suppose I could enrol at pastry school. Oh, my dear Josh, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. Halfway. Oh yeah, the intro for those of you who haven't seen it. If you haven't seen the intro, enjoy.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally, after four streams of three hours each, finished a two-hour game. We got the average ending. Love, but not respect. We may need to replay the entire game for the next couple of months, repeatedly, in order to get the good ending. Or, we need to move on to another dating simulator. The Pigeon one. The Hatoful Boyfriend. The Cthulhu one. I did not want to become a dating simulator streamer. However, I think for the next couple of weeks, it would be really funny. And let's be honest, it does, without a doubt, make amazing random background footage. It does, doesn't it? It's, it's done. It, it's good. Just do a reaction video to the ending of this. You know what? No. Dream Daddy. Yeah. Hatoful Boyfriend. Absolutely. Seems fitting, honestly. The, the Cthulhu one. Doki Doki Literature Club. I don't know what that is, but it sounds lovely. We will play that for the first time on stream. And just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. And we will see exactly how Doki Doki Literature goes. Right. Uh, no, we will definitely play Hatoful Boyfriend and we will play the Cthulhu Simulator. We probably won't play Doki Doki because I don't fancy being banned off Twitch. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on my journey to bang Colonel Sanders. There are sentences that you never think you'll say in life, and that was one of them. And I appreciate the fact that I've been able to say it. Josh is going to change from worst MMO to worst dating simulator. No, the, the YouTube is going to remain MMO focused. The YouTube's second channel, Josh Drive Plays, remains focused on retro reviews. The clip channel says whatever Visa wants to do with that, he's kind of in charge of that. But the, the Twitch streams, the Twitch streams don't need to be MMOs, do they? The Twitch streams are mainly just a chance to chat shit for a couple of hours and just relax. End it now with a meow. You are asking for all of the OnlyFans content to be shown, aren't you? You really are. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for joining me. It's been fun. Have a great weekend. I will try and upload a video this week on both channels. I will be at Insomnia in Birmingham from Thursday. If you are around, please let me know. But apart from that, take care. Good night.